Right. And the brother asked, could you break down what it means that Mary, the mother of us all? I was like, my nigga, did you watch the. <laughs> you mean Eve, the mother of us all, right? Right, right. Oh, wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. I think he's not.
Let me get let me get the good brother group up. Hey, shalom to the YouTube world, to the uh to my Twitter folk. Hey, I was working on this thing, um, trying to do what's the new one, Asha? Kick. Kick. Yeah, I was trying to work this kick out, but I think I gotta uh have some followers or something like that. Um it was supposed to start at eight. Tommy texted me. He said um, he's setting up. He need about. Do you did you send me the? Yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on. You texting me? The flyer. Hold on. He he just texted me about the uh the flyer. I guess he's creating a stream on his side. So let me just send it to him. Um. So I just sent it to him. So he's setting up right now. Um. Y'all know the initial battle was supposed to be part two because last week. We battled, um, we battled on the subject of, what was the subject? The subject was, who has done more harm to black people, white people or us? I took the position that it was white folk. He took the position that it was, um, that it was ourselves. He gave some weird ass analogies uh, about football because I was a Giants fan. He was a 49ers fan. And at the surface level, it was it was good up until uh, Tommy play, would play the part of he would be a 49ers fan, but he would be with the Giants. So in essence, he would be helping the Giants beat the 49ers. That's kind of what we were breaking down. But in the middle of that battle, while we was having it, um, the audience on his side and my side was like, y'all should do a round two of which we agreed. So the initial round two was supposed to be um, the same subject, but it was going to have audience participation. And everything that I'm saying now, Tommy probably will say once he's getting set up. Um, so y'all might just get a recap of a recap. So he asked me that I want to do a title. Is it the black man's job to protect the black woman? Now, if anybody knows my history of doing lectures and speakings and stuff like that, um, I would say that that's kind of like right up my alley of what I already do. So I didn't have a problem um, picking that subject. So we agreed upon that subject, same time of uh, eight o'clock. So I'm just waiting for him to come on. So while I got him, I, you know, I got some, I guess I could talk about my products. My products is always good to talk about. So for the ladies, I have this, did I say that? Like, where I get that from uh, Martin, for anybody that want to know. I used to always get a lot of phrases from movies. But anyway, so I have what's called whipped body scrubs. So if anybody knows, I sell whipped body butters. Oh, y'all probably can't even see the clarity on this. Check the clarity on that. Y'all probably can't. Y'all ain't even going to get a good enough clarity on these body scrubs. So I had to learn how to make them because I was buying the body scrubs like pre-made and then selling them. But I wanted to learn to make them myself. So I actually learned how to make the body scrubs myself. So I call them whip body scrubs because my body scrubs are made with Shea and they're absolutely fire. I have a 25% off sale. I always got a sale going on. So you want to make sure you take advantage of that. I saw this thing on TikTok. I don't know if this is going to ruffle any feathers. Um, what's the cast name? Uh, Brandon Jamal. It's not Brandon and Jamal. It's just Brandon Jamal. The name of TikTok is Brandon Jamal. But it's Brandon and Jamal, actually, right? I'm not sure. Can you check the YouTube for me? Uh, shout out to Nizam, the Jewel, Nizam, Anya, Jewel. Shout out to her. Um, Y'all know we got Passover coming up uh, April 20th in Durham, North Carolina. Listen, I'm going to get Tommy to come to the Passover. That's, that's my goal. I'm going to get Tommy because after we have this battle, I'm going to show him. Because remember, I came up with the slogan. This is my slogan. I'm a copyrighted. You got to get the wait. How did I say it? you got to correct them, then protect them. That, so you could kind of really say that I'm the reason for this particular topic that we're going to have. Uh, a wall said he see me with the iPhone. I got it. First of all, I have an iPhone and I have an Android. Me personally, I think the Android is better for multi-use the iphone is better for uh pictures and and recording videos but everything else like notifications suck on the iphone the email to me sucks on the iphone everything sucks on the iphone um not everything i'm sorry because like when i'll be getting the dropbox files they do work better 
uh text messaging is better but like when you can't do this on the iphone though everybody out pay attention watch it with me can't do this with the iphone can't do that you see that right there then you get to open it up right now you can see clubhouse let me show you how the magic of iphone so when i be battling right what i could do on here <laughs> what i could do on here so what i like about this right you got multimedia apps right and so what you could do on here if i push this button boom that just opened three bible apps at the same time so when i'm battling i can have precepts in one spot precepts in another spot all right there at the same time you can't do that on the iphone you just can't do it I'm sorry. Um, if it's the lock, you're going, you're going, you're going, you're going off, Cap. Be say that one more time. You're going off, Cap. You just have to say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's the, who that mile is. That mile, God, God, I figured mile and the iPhone lovers, you know, would say that, would chime in and say that because, of course, you know, they're pro iPhone users. And listen, I got I an iPhone too. Yeah. What's no, up? I ain't, I ain't tripping. I just didn't know why the app be glitching, but now I know you be having two. You say you be having two, three apps open at one time. But I don't use the when I'm on um Clubhouse. I only use the iPhone for Clubhouse. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Uh, okay. So that's why your YouTube be glitching. That's what. It <laughs> nah, nah, because actually I use a YouTube on um the iPhone too. Damn, I'm, I'm almost eliminating Android apps at the same time as you asking them questions. That's pretty good there um but editing and stuff like that i'll do that on the iphone I'm, excuse me i do that on the android but like multi like pictures and stuff like that i prefer the um the iphone yeah i get i'll give it to y'all y'all stuff is uh just better that cinema recording i'm saying y'all stuff like Corey and them on the iphone you know what i just realized i caught myself up into remember when uh chick-fil-a and popeyes was uh having that battle and niggas was going crazy over which chicken sandwich was better that's kind of what iPhone or Android is. It's like Chick-fil-A. Speaking of Chick-fil-A, Chick-fil-A said that they changing their chicken, just so y'all know. So they chicken will have, um, I think they boasted about Chick-fil-A not having um, antibiotics or something that, that were harmful to uh, humans. So what they did now or what they said now is that their Chick-fil-A is going to be changing. It, oh, here it goes. I'm going to tell you exactly what it is. This is probably why they're so happy. So it says uh, the Chick-fil-A, they uh, will transition from chicken raised with no antibiotics ever. The acronym is NAE. So sometimes when you're out there shopping, you want to make sure your chicken says NAE. That means there's no antibiotics ever. But they're going to be switching to chicken raised with no antibiotics important to human medicine. That is crazy. Like this is a horrible time to be living in. Um, when you got a vet food like this, man. I apologize. I mean, I don't. I don't know. Let me um refresh my page. See what we looking like with the brother. See if we can get it up in here. iPhone security is unmatched. Wow. Hold on one second, y'all. When did he tell me? Fifteen minutes. Okay, you say he's setting up now. Let me see if I can do this real fast. Salah, dude. Okay, up. We got 66 people in the room and only 10 shares. Mm. I don't know what is going on tonight. We got 66 people in the room and only 10 shares. Get the shares up to 50, y'all. 50 shares. It's not that difficult. Just one of you, just share once. All of y'all do it just once and we could get up to 50 shares and pass that. So please, family, share the room. This is going to be a good debate and a good conversation. Thanks. Share the room, family. And this brother on YouTube said he don't eat meat, man. I feel sorry for you, brother. So I can. Let me not spark that argument. You know, Hitler was a vegan, too. <laughs> I always think that's funny when I say that. But that's true though. Hitler was a vegan though. 
Hey, I, I found out now. This might this might be news to me. Uh, just to my clubhouse people and to uh, my YouTube people. I, I was today years old when I was able to confirm um, Farrakhan's daddy is a white man. I thought that was crazy. <laughs> Farrakhan's daddy, Percival something, is. And, and you know what type of white man he is? Anybody want to take a guess? English. The devil. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he's a so-called Jewish white man. Mm. Sheesh. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. So now, so when you think about it, that's two white people that are the leaders of the nation of Islam. You got the founder of the nation of Islam, uh, Far Muhammad, who's a white man. And then when Elijah passes away, they pass a torch to another white man. That is crazy. Ashar, can you hand me that uh, tablet right there? So I could get headshot. It's right there. I got it charging over there. I just don't want to um, go off the screen. Headshot. Yeah, so I could add the headshot to my uh, joint. Let me get that. So I was today years old when I found that out. Uh, Dwada, appreciate it. Plug this in. I'm just getting my soundboard together. Is it? Is it? Which? I don't see the cord. Did the cord gotcha. fall over there? Yeah. Okay. Let me get that cord. Yeah, I'm saying the Nation of Islam is definitely a white organization. Well, I, I won't say that they're a white organization, but they run. But the Nation of Islam is sure run by a white man. I wouldn't call them a white organization. I would call them black. But they just run by white folk. Now you see why. Now, now that makes sense why. Um, Farrakhan was mad at Khalid Muhammad when he did that uh Get shot. There we go. When he did that um King College speech. When uh Khalid Muhammad did that King College speech when he was saying the so-called Jew was not the Jew when we was the real Jews, you know, that's when um Farrakhan kicked him out. And now we see why. How we looking? My audience is on fire. It is on fire oh well just waiting for him to come on i had to do a wednesday because brothers i'm excuse me a sunday because brothers were getting mad at me about picking days on wednesdays and stuff like that i ain't gonna say no names um but they was mad raffling in the basket at the pad no but i do have some giveaways i have some giveaways for my submissive oil for women and henny white for men. So my submissive oil and Henny White will be a part of a giveaway. Um, you got to stay tuned to the next car chronicles. I'll be giving away to two people every time I do it to a male and a female. So I, I use the way I do the giveaways. I usually ask a random question. Um, and then if you get the question right, I'll send you something for free. All right. Tommy just texted me back and said he almost ready. So we just waiting. If I would have known, I definitely, well, I'm always punctual, so I'm always on time. So that's why I'm here um, just talking to y'all, trying to not have dead space. He just texted me and said he almost ready. Okay, so he just sent me the link. Hold on, let me send this. Let me email this to myself. I tell this nigga to text, but you know, I mean, the email rather. Let me email myself this link, and then we should be ready to go. So I got sent it to myself. Let's go ahead and paste. Um, Corey and Mile, I don't know if y'all was here when I said this earlier, um, but this is supposed to be interactive. So at some point, I believe we're going to allow audience participation in the form of um, either coming on the screen and asking a question or if you stay on Clubhouse, because um, they'll be able to hear you in my audience um, asking it through audio. So when we get to that part, if y'all do want to ask a question, um, just let me know. And then, you know, I'll go ahead and take your question. Come All right. Now I'm going to stop talking. I'm about to join. Um, Captain Tazaria, I should be Kate, but I want to put, let me put this in here. <clears throat> Dollar sign. <clears throat> Oh, 
All right, so I'm going to enter here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know if I want to share you because he's saying some real shit right now. Yeah. Hey, what's going on, brother? Yeah. 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 Okay. You hearing an echo? Slight. No, I don't hear no echo. Now. Okay. No, I don't hear no echo. It's gone. Yep, it's gone. Okay. Right now, um, I need to make sure you said. Uh, where's your link? Because I want to see uh, if you could. Text yeah, I'll text me it to you. Yeah, yeah, I'll text it. yeah, I'll text it to you. Yeah, and then I'll text you the link to mine, and you so we okay. can be able to see right. what each of them are talking about. Yeah, that'll be perfect. We can view in on them and see what they what the fuck they talk about. <laughs> No problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit behind. My homeboy came down here to visit me. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. He down here to see his family. I'm trying to do a show with him, but mm -hmm. he don't even know if he'll be able to do it because of, I guess well, your wife ended up having you running around. Oh, running around. And that's what he did. His wife got him running around with family, so he don't know exactly. Yeah. Hey Tommy, I'm trying to get you to North Carolina, man. We doing we having a Passover April 20th. I can show you how we get down. You'll be safe too. I'm gonna say it. We gonna talk about that on the yeah. show. I'm talk, you need to ask a few questions. She said you need to ask this nigga a few questions so you so you take your way up there. No, nope. she, she, she want me to. She want me to come home. I guess. Nope. I, I, I'm not oh, sure. He's definitely gonna come home. He, he'll yeah, she want me to come home, or she's trying to add more life insurance. One of the two. One of the two, right? So she trying to get you to protect. <laughs> <laughs> right. She <trying laughs> to protect. There ain't nothing wrong with that. See, that's how it works. Right. We protect. We protect each other. That's how that works. Exactly. You might not be worried about if I'm coming home. She is worried about that mortgage being paid. If I ain't, yeah. So, so you saying it ain't about you? It's about the mortgage, huh? <laughs> hey, I mean, hey. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta realize you provide the check. That's what it is that you do. That's it. I might not do a lot of things well, but I do provide the check. So, I mean, shit. That's funny yourself. Oh man. Let's see. Um. I'm almost done. Okay. Let's see, copy this. Uh, that is all set. That is all set. I just need the title. Okay. And see, what I did was I, well, I think you might have put it on there, but what I did was I added part two. And I'm just gonna label them every time we go yeah, do something. Yeah, part no, three. That, yeah, yeah, part three, part four, because I, I think we got a real yep. good fire. I mean, we can and so we can keep the series going. going. Motherfuckers be like, yo, you seen part two right, or episode right, two? Like, right, 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 right. That'll make it real good. I think we should definitely do that. Mm -hmm. Let me see if the camera is looking back. I gotta need a little more lighting. <laughs> That's all right. Let's see my see my belly. And I do think that we're I do think that we're good. So I do the same thing again. I okay. I'm not gonna play that song you don't like. Nah, nah, you can play <laughs> no, nah, play the song. I, I think I am. Nah, you can play the song. I was say, wait a minute. I think I am. Fuck the bullshit. I think I am. <laughs> Let me see if I can pull it. I, I, I had the file. Where is the file at? I know I had it. Under the meetings, I think. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, it's going to get played. It's going to get played. <laughs> it's going to get played. Put some lotion on my hand. Make sure Tyreek and she can't call me Ashy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how he made crispy me ashy, but he, he did it. He he figured that's it out. He ain't never that's seen me said. with no ash on me. Yeah, that's what he said. The nigga turned around and said, once it was a few of y'all, it was actually some of y'all brothers. 
is the Israelites that said we can't, they told him we can't get behind you calling making fun of another black man's skin color. He, he said, said no, I ain't, I ain't making fun of his skin color. I'm, yeah. I'm calling him ashy. Yeah, no, but see, you. Can, I said I always got love for y'all brothers because it's always been some of y'all stick up for you, boy. There you go. We keep it real. We don't like that colorism. Yeah, we do not like that colorism, man. We come in all different shades of brown, and that's how I need to stay. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, can't be hollering that we pro-black and then turn around and have a problem with part of the black. Right. They be like, nah, he too light-skinned, he too dark-skinned. How about if what he's saying is correct? Can we, mm -hmm. can we beat this nigga down on the truth? If we can do that, I'm good. He ain't telling the truth. I don't know. A woman called in day. She asked this woman, are you white? I said, why does it matter if she's white if she's right? I said, defeat what she said. I said, no, she's not. Yeah, I said, no, she's not. Because she was now judging this black woman by how well she speaks English. Who, why would we even do that? It, it, because she speaks English well, the first thing we say is, you sound white. She can't help what she grew up or who she grew up around. Mm. White folks take their wiggers if their wiggers can help them pro pro progress. They use their wiggers to say, you know your way around, black folks. Tell us what you learned. <laughs> what is that the spook that sit beside the door? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I believe and if a nigga can walk in them white folks' spaces, bring his ass back into the fold and ask him, what did you see while you was in there? <laughs> What was them white folks doing? Let's see how we can infiltrate them. Yeah, they've all, I've always done that. They never had a problem with using black folks to get to other black folks. They've infiltrated, infiltrated every black movement that way. They ain't had no problem doing it. Jews do it. Black men protect. All right, I, I think, think I'm ready. ready. All right, I'm get this thing ready and just bring you. In. You ready? Okay. You let, let me know when you're ready, ready, and then I'm I get ready. Yeah, I'm, no, I'm ready now. All right, cool. I'm gonna go around to press this line, and we're gonna go down the line. Do 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 you sound a little, sound a little on my side. They you know, on my side. I'm going to open up just in case they want to have a phone line. Yeah, because I wasn't, wasn't this supposed to be interactive, right? I'm, I'm not mistaken. Maybe yeah, we'll, we'll do that. Okay. So I'll open up a show here. And also that link I gave you, if they want to jump up here visual, if you sent your that link, you can use that link. Gave you He's back. Yeah, I did that on purpose. Why do I have two of me up here? Yeah, I did that on purpose because I wanted to see if um if because they were saying that you were sounding a little choppy. Huh. Yeah, we don't need to do I, see, I like it's moving my yeah, I'm getting a feedback from you. You said you're getting feedback from me? Yeah, look in your settings. I'm looking at them now. Does it say, uh, on your settings, click where it says um, echo cancellation? It's turned off. You want me to turn that on? Yeah, click it on. Okay. I'll just click that on. Yeah, click that one and the one below it on. So okay. we don't have it. All right, so I just click that. Yeah. Yeah, it's gone now. Okay. It, right, let me check on that uh, too. Let me reload.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? Hopefully everybody is ready. The show is good. It's going. Thank you guys for being a part of the show here. Got my man, Captain Tazaria. We are live for part two. And on this one, I think we got a wonderful conversation. Cap, why don't you tell them who you are and tell them what, the, what we're going to talk about right now today. Oh, what's going on, man? I'm Captain Tazariak of ISPPK under command in General Yana. Um, First of all, I want to appreciate Tommy. We're back up with a, uh, another round two. And I think we got a, a excellent, really, really, really good subject based on um, especially things that go on amongst our people. And I believe the subject is... Um, is the black man supposed to protect? Let me make wait. Let me read it right from the type. Is it the black man's job to protect the black woman? That's the subject I believe that we're dealing with today. And I think well, somebody immediately somebody, somebody immediately said, said no. God. <laughs> They didn't wait for you to finish. <laughs> Soon as it said, it's black man's job. No, black man. He no. Black man should just be be at home somewhere doing nothing. <laughs> no, as soon as it came off, soon as off the rip. <laughs> Damn. Well, let, let it finish. Let me get it all out. Like you don't even let me finish the damn. Subject, like, let me get the subject out so we can see exactly what's happening. Like, it might be God. somebody in your hey, side. Like, Hell me. no! Like, God, <laughs> <You're> embarrassing me! <laughs> Shit! Oh. Hell no! Oh, so I mean, but <laughs> I'll tell you what, Tommy. Then that means you definitely picked a good subject because then, if it's not the black man's job, then at some point in this dialogue, we're gonna have to find out. Whose job is it then? Like that's what we're gonna have mm -hmm. to get to because if it's not our job, then whose job is it? I guess that's where we would have to get well, to at some point. Yes, and 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 then we have to really uh, look into like what is the job? What are the job requirements? Um, is it just a melanin-based thing? And I would love to be able to just. Uh, drill down on that because I know one of the things you talked about in the last show mm -hmm. and that was um protection and what you right. said was protection. you said protection yeah said how you said it. I said we got to correct them then protect them and I'm, I'm, I think mm -hmm. I created a whole new slogan that you got that should go on a t-shirt Captain Desire yeah correct them then protect them <laughs> right before you erect them <laughs> Especially if you're going in their rectum. <laughs> what is, what is, <laughs> but what the question is, what do you have to do before you select them? Or what goes into that? <laughs> oh, I mean, now, now go ahead. Well, because we were talking today and, and I brought up a subject and it mm -hmm. said 52% of black women mm -hmm. had herpes. Did you know that statistic? 52% of black women had herpes. No. Yes. I didn't know. So herpes. Not just that herpes you get the motherfucking Carmex from. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm. Crazy. So, the people got mad at me and I kept thinking, I said, why is this not a subject we talk about? Right. We talk about a lot of things, but we don't bring up that. And that would be important because if uh, Men were doing something like we've heard conversations about down low black men all the time. They always talk about down low black men. Right. But I say we never talk about upfront holes. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of upfront holes out here. And they're telling you you have to deal with it. Like <laughs> if a man says something as simple as I don't date women with children, there will be one group of people who will come out of the woodworks telling you it's fucked up. You won't do it. Say that part again. Uh, black men that say they won't deal with what? Yeah, if, if a if a if a man, any man says I don't want to date women with children. Right. What happens is only one group of women would come out and say, How dare you say that? Right. Right. What group is that? Black women. Right. Now, why would they say that? Why would they well I mean with you, you, you have children, yes? Yes. Yep. No children. You like skin, of course you got kids. Somebody wants some kids with you. <laughs> now you doing you doing what you said Tariq Nasheed did. Now you now you now how you gonna how you gonna say 
the Israelites protected you from the rape, from the skin racing, and then gonna damn do the same thing to me, man. God damn. I need to... <laughs> you know, you, you know, you know, y'all life get niggas, y'all get the woman pregnant. As soon as she had her baby, she hold it up like they did Simba. It's the circle of life and the rule of law. Hey, Tommy, you know that means- when, they, when they have my baby, they be trying to hide it. Talking right. then the doctor put no covers on his face. Hey, hey, you know you sound like Tariq. You and Tariq the same now. Just so what you mean? What does he say? I no, no, I'm saying using the skin color. Remember, he said you. Oh, and, yeah, you and Tommy the same. I mean, excuse me, you and Tariq the same. With the so we gonna have to work. No, on see, that. he had bad stuff to say about it. Uh huh. I'm I I don't have anything bad to say about y'all. Most of my cousins are light skinned anyway. I know how y'all roll. That's why I stay with y'all. I stay with a light skinned nigga. When I go to the club. I'm going with him because I know he can't sleep with all of them. But I know they're gonna all try to sleep with him, and I'm gonna get the cast offs. So I know how this work. Mm. But now, so <laughs> but look at you, you, know, you trying to play it off. Y'all see, trying to play modest. No, you a married man. You can't go down that road. I look at him. No. I mean, you know, no. look at him. He's like, ah, you know. Hey, but I'm gonna tell you, no, because that's not true. Because when, if you think about it, if you're gonna play the color part, light skinned mm -hmm. brothers are more looked at as soft, like the pretty boy. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So what we, yes. like, what I love about the Israelites, and why you even mentioned it was the Israelites that helped you with Tariq is that we don't mm -hmm. think about your skin complexion because those like that skin, you know what that skin complexion creates? It creates the same thing that this conversation creates. It creates an unnecessary hatred and competition. So now you might, let's say if you and I were brothers, like my, my family, for example, Oh, right. So like my family, for example, we have light skin and dark. We had many different shades of brown in my family. But, and so now because of the colorism that, Get, was given and imp imparted on us, we might think this man or light skinned brother is going to get a better job in my family than the dark skin, or this dark skin one can fight. Like we put stigmas based on the colorism, which goes right into the conversation we're going to have because the hatred that uh, black men and black women have for each other, which is why we don't protect, is because somebody taught us to have this tension. You know what I'm saying? Between ourselves. Because like you say, even the question you asked, is black women that say get mad if a brother doesn't want to um uh be with someone that has a child. It's black women that complain. But now, why are black women complaining? Because some of them have kids and then they're not with mm -hmm. that person anymore. Now, that's a two-sided argument there. Because on one side, mm -hmm. I would say it's probably more than likely that black woman probably got rid of that man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm talking about the, her, her father, the child's father. The black man, excuse me, that black woman probably got rid of that child's father, probably put that child's father on child support, so now the child's father don't want to be around, and then now that child grows up childless, and all of that happens within there. Now, you have to go to what she was taught. Did she grow up with a father? Because if she didn't grow up with a father, then that's probably why for her it's a natural thing to hate a black man just like it's a natural thing for a black man to hate a black woman what i'm saying about black women it also applies to black men because we do the same thing like we grow up and we see our mother or we see our father, so for a, a, a daughter she grows up without that father her whole life is hating her father so even though she gets in a relationship, she subconsciously or, or sub-mentally is having also the absent father relationship with the man that she's with. And it's the same thing for a brother. If a brother grows up without a mother or when he grows up with that mother, if that mother is promiscuous, if she has a bunch of men around, she he hates that his mother has that reputation. So although she, excuse me, although he goes out and dates women, He's also subconsciously treating those women like how he felt either the hatred that he has for his mother, what he shouldn't have, what his mother shouldn't have been doing. And so now the only so now we had like a, a, a road. So we had a collision course. So you got the woman in a damn Chevy, the man in a Dodge Challenger, and they on a collision course to crash into each other. But somebody got to stop driving. Somebody got to stop. Yeah. Somebody got to stop driving. You said we're playing chicken. 
Yeah. And somebody got to stop driving and say, you know what? I'm going to get in your car and we're going to drive together. And the black woman has to stop driving. That That's what black women don't, don't want to hear is that black women have to stop driving. You can't drive the car. You know why a woman can't drive the car? And when I give this analogy, this ain't sexist. This is just is what it is. Black woman ain't going to think about one one place a black woman goes. I'm saying black women because that's the subject. So I don't want nobody to be why you ain't saying white women. The, the, the battle is, is a black man supposed to protect a black woman. So that's why I'm saying black women. One place a black woman can go where she going to get hustled is the mechanic shop. You know why she going to get hustled at the mechanic shop? Because she don't know a goddamn thing about cars. She go there for oil chains. They tell you you need brakes. Ain't nothing wrong with the brakes. They tell you you need a new carburetor. That's probably old school. You need a new carburetor. Your transmission is messed up. We got to flush it. And so you go for a $80 oil change and you end up spending $500 at the mechanic. You know why? Because she don't you know why? Because she don't know. The black woman has to get out and get in the car with the man because the man will know how to drive the car, take care of the car. When he go to the mechanic spot, he not going to get hustled. If he going for an oil change, he going to get the oil change. So he's the one that carries the manual. And the woman is the one that rides passenger and shotgun. And so now she's protected. Not just Now I'm using it as a metaphor. So she would be protected from the mechanic trying to take advantage of her. Black woman in 2024, though, they don't think they need a man to help her with the mechanic. And so the mechanic hustles her out of everything. Hey, let, hold, I, I, I got to do you a favor. <laughs> you see how I didn't say shit. Right. When a, when a nigga dropped the juice, I was told shut the fuck up. And when Tommy don't say something, you know something dropping. If, if, if I listen, I'm, I'm a big believer in don't be a fool. If somebody's saying the truth, you let them spit it. Don't fuck up. Let me tell you something. What you want me to see one of these? Oh, you want me to see you one of these? I'm gonna send you the address right now. I'm about to say, <laughs> you want me to see you one of these? I'm about to send you the address right now. Gotta get, he got the belt on that. That was some that was some real shit. And hey. see, and, and I gotta tell you, one of the things that I was disappointed in, and I don't mean to say anything about like your audience, but I'm this very, very straight. The girl was like, You need to talk to him about that, right? You just gotta see that even now, as I started. I haven't done anything wrong, and I noticed in some of the comments. Now it wasn't all of them, mm -hmm. but you'll have people. He sounds sweet. He sounds sassy. Did he a coon? Why are you talking to him? And that was the one that really hurt me when I saw in the comment section of why are you talking to him? Right, as if black folks are the arbitrator of, of of who can speak. And y'all, and and we so busy trying to alienate other black people. In my opinion, I think that we're just jealous of white people. We're not upset about white supremacy. We're just upset that white supremacy, we can't use it, and it doesn't help us. Uh, somebody said, is, if, if the sound is real bad, I don't know if you can drop out and try to come back in. For me? Maybe that'll help. Yeah, because on my end, they're saying it's, it's fine. Yeah, no, I'm talking about on my end. That's on my end, not your end. Oh, you know what I think? Yeah, because that's what I'm saying. Maybe if you dropped out and come back in, it would help. I'm not really sure. No, they hear me. But you're being fine. Like, right now, it's fine. Yeah, no, they hear me fine. They're saying on my side. Yeah, but they're saying, yeah, they're saying they're not hearing me. On my end, we're, oh, they're oh, hearing oh, both okay, of us. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. okay all right. No sweat. So, let, I'm going to know what I'm going to do. And I can tell you. Let me see what the numbers are. Okay. Okay, that's that's good money. Right. Okay. 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 So I'm gonna do that real fast. Okay. No sweat. So I'm gonna do that real quick, and then I'm gonna come back. All right. All right. Hey, y'all. So what I'm gonna do real fast? I'm gonna just drop out, which I just did. Um, I'm gonna come back in. Now this didn't do this to me last week. I don't know why it's doing it. Um. 
this this week. Ain't nobody, uh, uh, Shar, yes. nobody touched the mixer or anything, right? Not since Thursday. Nobody used it at all or anything like that? No, sir. Not that I, I, I got no reports about being, it's not supposed to be used. All right, no sir. So I'm gonna try it one more time. Y'all just bear with me one second. So I'm gonna remove my. Yeah, I sound good. I, that's why. I'm, that's the only part I don't understand why he sounds like this. Um, so now y'all can see me in the screen. I don't have. Let me check my audio real fast because I don't have anything else open. Let me check. I'm using the line. Using the mic line. Volume is all the way up. Yeah, I don't I don't have anything else. Um what I will do is Let me know if y'all can hear me. Can y'all hear me? Give me a one, two if y'all can hear me or not. Let me check my settings. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. Let me check my, go back to my clubhouse app. Make sure I'm good to go. Hey, uh, Daniel, can y'all hear me all right? If Daniel or Mal is there, I just want to make sure y'all can hear me all right. We can hear you. All right, perfect. The water. All right, so I did unplug that. So I'm going to go back to his stream yard. Give me one second. Let me go click his link in my Gmail app. Did you invite him last time or he invited me? No, he invited me. Yeah, pretty much the only thing I didn't do was have that plugged in. Maybe that's it. So we'll see. Enter the studio and I'm. Uh, I appreciate it. Yeah, we back in the game. So we're going to rock now. However it goes after this time, and that's just how we're going to go with it. They tough enough, I think. I think they're tough enough. To and uh, and pull it down and then re-upload it over right. there. Then, then that's fine. Right. But I'm going to tell you what really, what really hurt my feelings okay. in this. Is even when I watch some of the stuff that they're writing right now, which is probably why I'm glad that I didn't re watch it the last time. <laughs> right. We were having such a good conversation, mm -hmm. and yet you have these one sided people. And I and I tell you, when you watch and you can go and watch the comments over on my any place where I had it, the people were glad that we had a good conversation. They were happy. Mm -hmm. I went and watched what your people were watching, right. saying, and many of them were saying things had nothing to do. With what I said, they didn't dispute anything. It was just, you know, he a coon. You know, you beat that nigga. That nigga don't know what he's talking about. And then it was like, I was like, what kind of discussion is this from black folks where they don't want to open up their minds? Like, I I thought that they would see us both talking and say, right. okay, this is a good thing to see black men doing this. Mm -hmm. Nah. And we are too much of this whole I'm this camp. I'm that camp. Right. Like I this person just wrote, who cares? Talk to Cap about the subject matter. Why would they say that when the last show I literally just said, I did not read what they said. Right. The other people are writing smiley face, laughing. It's funny to them. Mm -hmm. This is why when you ask me about building stuff or like my girl was like, you can't go over there with them people because even if he's protecting you and okay with you, it's too many niggas that follow him that'll try to do something to you and it make them happy. We have too many destructive black folks with us, even when we're trying to move and do the right thing. Like even what I'm saying right now, mm -hmm. I've said nothing wrong. Right. In your own comment section, look how many smiley faces it is. Laughing. As I create drama, I laugh. Stop reading the track after she puts cry face. Hmm. But the last show, I didn't read the chat. Right. I'm only pointing something out. 
And that is insane that you can't do it. And then someone says, just having fun. You're not having fun. It's not fun when you're doing something to make another person who's supposed to be dropping jewels or having a dialogue feel uncomfortable around you. And that's a lot of shit that y'all do. Because right. let me tell you what, my audience where it's over 3,000 people right now watching, ain't no motherfucker sitting up there talking about some we just having fun. They're listening to what he's saying. And when he says something that makes sense over what I'm saying, they say, well, he got a point. But you got he crying. It's just the chat. See, man, quit crying. You know what I'm going to tell you? And this is this is hey. now you don't you definitely have a point. So I'm going to say, well, first, I'm going to say uh, I understand why your lady says um, even if you deal with cap, he can't protect you. Right. I understand that because mm -hmm. that, that's the that's the absolute perfect wife's answer. That's the perfect woman's answer because and that's going to go into what we was talking about with uh what we may talk about the brooklyn story because that's something similar to what the brooklyn lady said they shouldn't just do nothing because they think that right because they're supposed to so now here's what i could tell you about where i'm inviting you to before i speak about these uh people this is our event this ain't these people in the chats event the event that i'm talking right. about we call it the lord's passover it's a high holy day where we celebrate uh the most high um, we have a party, we have food, and it's a real brother and sisterhood, and nobody has ever gotten hurt on my watch. I'm saying that so your wife can hear it, I'm saying it so you can hear. As far as the people in the chat, I go through the same, I go through this all the time. No matter where I go, like I'll be on this app called Clubhouse, right? I'll be on this app. Oh Lord. Yeah. <laughs> And on this, that that is that is straight up Thunderdome, <laughs> right? So now, Clubhouse, I go on Clubhouse, and it's men, not women. It's men on Clubhouse that if I go in the room and I start speaking, they make it a point to come into the room just to argue with me, tell me I ain't shit, f you, your kids, and stuff like that. Now, here's the drink I drop. You got to understand first the people on my side. I don't know them people either, but what happens? <laughs> what what happens is when you say stuff that's controversial, it's going to inherit a lot of people that's going to like you. That's why you've had followers since you've been doing it. But with the followers, yeah. it's also going to be a lot of people that say, "Man, if Tommy," so when when they watching you and I battle, they not even mad at you for what you probably saying in the live. They probably mad at what you said five or six years ago that they never got over. So now you being the man in charge in this scenario, you have to say whatever it is they say, I don't really care. And then just use it to your advantage because you can complain all you want. But even as you was complaining and saying, you see that it, it get worse. Yeah. Yeah. It get worse. So, well, you know, let me tell you why I do it though. Let me tell you why I do it. See, I have an audience of people who believe, we can't deal with black folks. We right. need to take the 10% of black folks that ain't niggas mm -hmm. and just let them fall off. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times what I do is back them up by saying, do not let these people make you feel bad. I don't care if they family members. If you make it and they tell you, you should give back to the black community. You mean that community that spent its time when I was trying to get up to tear me down? Now that I've made it, I'm supposed to now help you? You are. When I hear people tell me I'm a sellout. Like, it's right. funny. Right. They say, I'm a sellout and a coon. I'm like, cool. You've been calling me a sellout and cool for 10 years. Mm -hmm. Then you saw me on Fox News. Why would you tell me? Why would you go on Fox News? <laughs> Nigga, I'm a sellout and a coon. Where the fuck else I'm supposed to go? <laughs> it's like telling a woman you think she ugly and you don't want her. So she get with somebody else. Then you be like, why are you over there with that nigga? You didn't want me. What the hell? If I sell out in coon, nobody should get mad at me for selling out in coon. And here's what's weird. I sell out in coon for money. The nigga sell dope for money. You got more respect for the nigga who sell dope to you, who sells crack to you, who destroys your community, who holds your community up for ransom. You are afraid in your own home. But I ain't never heard no coons ever come into your neighborhood and you were scared. I ain't never heard nobody say, better watch out for them coons. Them coons gonna shoot up the block. I ain't never heard nobody say, you go out to them coons online, they gonna show up. Coons ignore you. So I'm confused at why, because if they were really a problem, 
Y'all wouldn't go after them so hard, and you won't even go after the uncle in your family that's molesting people. Y'all don't hear me. <laughs> you call out Coon, but you don't call out your uncle, and you know who this nigga is. Yeah, I don't, I can't yeah, say. I don't yeah, I definitely I can't say whether you're Coon or not. I don't know enough. I don't. I think that the internet provides an avenue for us to say exactly what we want. What now? What the people that are calling you coons have to think about is why are they listening if you're the coon? Why do, how do they even follow you to get the fox if they're the coon? Because I think coons and drug dealers are the same. Me person, a true coon. I'm not saying I'm not call, I'm not calling Tommy that, but I'm saying a true coon and a drug dealer are the exact same. We should talk about both of them. But what I do always know is that the people in the hood or the or the 10 percent that you're talking about. The only thing that they're lacking is an opportunity that what we lack in our communities is opportunity. You made a point to say that uh, we're jealous of white supremacy. I don't know if jealousy, I don't know if jealousy is the appropriate word. But what I do know is the work ethic that we lack is a more appropriate word, because once you come, if we go into the community like. Me as an Israelite, I go teach. We go teach to the same community that they say is destroyed, downtrodden. And we go wake people up. And when you give them the solution, depending on the work that it requires, then you're going to see if this person really wants to change or if they just content with being a wicked black man or a wicked black woman. But as long as you give them the opportunity, you can then say, well, I gave you the opportunity to do this. As far as the Fox News things goes, I don't know why anybody will have a problem with a black man going on any show, any network, unless now if they up there stepping fetching, then we're going to say something. Now, now what you're going to force me to do, I'm going to have to go watch all your stuff on Fox to see them. Then I'm going to come. I'm going to send you the links when we do part three. When we do, we're gonna part do a show, you know, what we're going to do. We're going to do a show like like I did my songs. I'm gonna play. Yeah, yeah, there, you go, there you go. And then listen, the show could be like, hey, look at your face. The show could be like, it's Tommy or Coon. Like, I don't know if Coon is the appropriate word, but it's Tommy this. Let's, like, we're gonna put Tommy on trial. Captain Desire, y'all gonna put, I like it. I'm gonna put Tommy on trial. And then we're gonna see. And then you could do the same thing to me. You know what I mean? And then we could start really analyzing because you bringing up Fox, right? And I know this ain't really on subject, but this, no, actually, it is on subject. Uh, it is. The girl. Candace Owens, right? Uh, oh, <laughs> you see how Candace Owens got. I'm gonna be on two things this week. I'm gonna be on Fox on Tuesday talking about that, and I'm gonna be on um, Infowars on Monday talking about that. Infowars, that's what uh, that's what the white boy, what's the white boy named Infowars? A Alex Jones. Alex Jones, right, right. Okay, so now here's here's what I think people are missing, and maybe you could take this with you when you talk to Fox, because Fox, I think Fox might like this part. I think what people are missing. Most importantly, about Candace Owens being let go from that Jewish organization is that. Ooh, I'm sorry. What 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 kind of organization? <laughs> that Jewish was? organization from the. Okay, Jewish, I just want to sure. Go ahead. <laughs> no, go ahead. Is that when she was spending all her time talking about black people? Oh, it was all good. It was. It was clapping it up. Can't, it can't get enough of it. Can't get enough of it. But she could not spend a lot of time talking about Jewish people. She could not spend a lot of time talking about anything that goes against what they believe is their policy. So now I don't listen. I, I sent you the address. I sent you the address. <laughs> I sent you the address. It's spinning, nigga. It's spinning. It's spinning. <laughs> I sent, you, I sent you the address. So now, as people are upset, now I don't particularly like Candace Owens, but I don't disagree with everything that she says. Like when she's talked about the, there was a there was an interview I saw with her when she was talking about transgenders, and she was like, "I can't play make believe with you." I agree with that. But then when she talked Amen. about George Floyd dying for fentanyl, I disagree with that. So I don't agree with everything that Candace Owens says. But what I do know the play of white people. And when Candace started talking about Jewish people, that's when she got let go. So if y'all are angry for black people, if y'all are angry at Candace, but you're not mad at Ben Shapiro, then there's a problem. If you're not mad at, because all, all Ben Shapiro gonna do 
is find another black person to do what Candace Owens was doing. And then what is that black person going to do? If we don't give that new black person correction, that black person is going to come on that show and just going to talk about black people and never talk about Jewish people again. And so that's the hey. bigger play. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I got, I got it. So, so what I was saying, the bigger, the bigger issue that black people should be talking about, black people should be petitioning for Candace to get her job back. Because if you petition to get her job back, you have now, now you're protecting her, but then we're gonna have to correct her. Because when the black people get a job back, they're gonna have to tell, hey, Candace, you're gonna have to stop saying all the wild shit that you're saying about black people. But that's what's required because we should be going to black, excuse me, we, be, we should be going to Ben Shapiro's organization saying, why did you only fire her after she kept talking about Jewish people but never fired her when she was talking about black people and then forced them to answer? It's almost like with the Kyrie Irving thing, how they suspended him. But the owner of Amazon still was allowed to sell products and that same documentary on it. They never took the documentary off Amazon, but uh, Kyrie got it. And a they changed the price. You see, they tripled yeah. the price of it. Of course. Made money off of it. So I think a lot of times black people miss the play or miss like the bigger picture, and especially black women. So I, I, that's all I wanted to add. Okay. And now here's what I want to uh, tell you now. You didn't know I did this. You you didn't know. You you didn't know. I'm gonna show you something if if, if you don't mind. Okay. Take a look I'm at your screen. Uh huh. And look at this. What was the title of the show that I just did? What was the title of that show? I'm gonna see if I can make it a little. It says bit Candace more. Owens fired for anti-Semitic speech by Ben Shapiro. Blacks take heat. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see it. Yep. I see it. You see, you see that now again. Now you up here just uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, what you're doing is you doing coon talk. That is coon talk. What you did just did. <laughs> you are coon talking. Because, now, how is it you had the same talking points I had? That's why I wish that more black people would stop trying to always be good versus evil, left versus right, right. with other black folks. Right. These people who steadily call me a coon. They don't do half the stuff I do for black people, nor do they say half the stuff I say that gets me canceled, and it ain't about them. I sat up there and told them in that show, it is already documented, so it ain't that Tommy is on your show trying to say something right. that he didn't say every night. Right. But I already said on that show, you go back and listen to it uh, on my website at tjskoc.com. I said, black folks need to take heed because when Candace Owens was talking about just black folks, the Jews sit up there who own that, Ben Shapiro, allowed her to sit there and talk about just black folks mm -hmm. all damn day. The more she hurt black folks, the more they said, keep doing it. It's right. just free speech. It's just That's free right. speech. That's when right. she was talking, it was just free speech. But then as soon as she said something about Jews, it was, how dare you say that? You now, the thing I is, you were saying it was true what she was saying about blacks. But when she said something about Jews, that was true as well. Right. As a matter of fact, you fired her. But the Jewish man who got on the show called her N-I-G-G-E-R. It was with the hard ER. <laughs> but I think. I have you know, that, that yeah, we, but I think it comes from we get like we're. So now because a lot of black people are raised by women, we're super duper emotional. And so we respond emotionally. We don't respond with what you would call like a common sense, like what is really happening here? It's almost like a magician. Like, you know how to, when a magician is pulling a, the rabbit out of the hat, you missing how he pulling the rabbit out because he sends you a distraction over here. So the distraction in this case is Candace Owens is loud, married to a white man, which of course I don't agree with. So now because of her personal life, and her personal view. Thank you. We not paying attention to why she really got fired. She got fired for race speaking. But then you got to say, well, ain't that isn't that what she do all the time? Don't she talk about different? Don't she talk about her race all the time publicly? If that's not a problem, well, it's it's almost like, um, when um I think I remember Dave Chappelle he did a stand up or something like that where he he was like um the, it was something with the n i can't even get it no more so i probably won't even say it, but it was something about the n-word and 
he had to make a point to tell the director that he wasn't a nigga either. But they had an issue when he was using um, the community type of words. And that's the same thing. It's like black people are the one people that you can crucify, you can vilify, you can dog, you can down them out. But when everybody else do it, excuse me, but when you talk about another race, they not having it. Now, here's the correction for black people. We have to stop making our way of life easily acceptable to other races of people, too. And then we can say, like, you ever, you ever, like, I know some people, like, uh, a white man grows up around them, they'll let them say the N-word. They'll let them say nigger. If a white woman grows up, they'll say, oh, she not black. Excuse me, she not white, she's black. You don't get that in reverse. You don't get it in reverse where if you hang around a bunch of white people, they call you white. You're going to always be black. If you hang around a bunch of Jewish people, they're going to call you Jewish. They're going to you're going to always be black. You're going to always be the black cat standing out. What we do is let everybody appropriate our culture and we don't hold or have no value to it. So if we don't put value to our culture, we can't expect them to. You don't see other races putting their dirty laundry so publicly out for everybody to see. But we do. And our laundry shouldn't be made for the public. We should wash our clothes in private, just like they wash their clothes in private. You find it out when they get the occasional um, white man or white woman that goes rogue and reveals information like the COINTELPRO. We find that out because a white person went rogue against the FBI. Now we found out COINTELPRO. Without that, we don't even know. But we give so much of ourselves away that we let people call us. We let another race call us nigga like we didn't get called that name in a derogatory fashion. We let everybody take our culture, talk about us, dog us out. And you know who's the biggest lovers of white people? Us. And because of that, because like the Bible said, you can't serve two masters. You're going to love one and hate the other. So if you mm. if you spend all day saying we got to forgive this other people, but you're not spending all day saying you got to forgive your own, you're gonna naturally love the people that you're saying you got to forgive, and you're gonna naturally hate the people that you don't. And so the black man and black woman, the black man been infatuated with the white man, the black woman been infatuated with the white woman, and until we become infatuated with each other, until we get compassion on each other. We ain't, we're gonna be messed up. You don't even need me here, man. I'm just gonna let you get this solo. You don't need me today. I this, this know. This, this is y'all know what this was was a tag team fight where I'm just sitting on the rope watching him whoop both niggas' ass. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't had to come tag me at all. I'm over there cheerful. <laughs> That's what's going on. I'm listening to you. I'm like, right. We gotta find something. We gotta find something to disagree on. Right we, now, I will. I can, okay. I can do that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I do have that ability. He said, "I can do that." I can't do that. Right. I can't do that. <laughs> now, here's where I would say I disagree with you a little bit. You said we have to bring, ask them to bring her back, and then when she gets back, we have to correct her and tell her where she can't say. Let me tell you what we need to do. If we were black and, and, we, and we were this group of people who had power like the Jews. First thing we would do is say, if she has a large voice, there should be a black person with a podcast who says, bring her on there. So her loud voice can boost that black platform because that's mm -hmm. why they do it. They take someone who has a big voice and they stick it on theirs. That's how I got on Fox. Because they said, everybody else is trying to make sure to ban this nigga. Right. There's supposed to be something good about him. We'll bring him here. So, the black folks who claim they pro-black spend all their time going to white folks at YouTube to get me flagged. Mm. So then I don't exist anymore. They did that. They ain't I'm got no black white folks on YouTube. YouTube. I'm going to bring you back on YouTube. But they got me off. I can't even show my face like that. So, okay, cool. So here's what happened, though. What we should do is we will do that for ourselves like they do. And second off, when we say we should correct her, no. We should be able to show them something that they haven't shown, which was we're going to allow you to say what you're saying about Blacks, 
as long as you continue to have that same energy as the people would say for other people. Because if we tell her she can't say what she's saying about blacks, the exact same way that the Jews were saying you can't say about Jews, we know different. We're now directing the conversation and we're manipulating it. Then I move on to this part of it. I say, if we really are trying to do something, why don't we understand? I don't like the fact that she got a white man. I don't like the fact that, I don't like none of that. But here's what I try to do is understand. Where is she coming from? And I've never been a Candace Owens fan. I only sit up here and said, what's right is right. And the one thing you will know about me is I always side with, even if I hate you, what's right is right. Right. Like when you said, we allow other people to say nigga. Mm. Well, let me tell you what Jews do. Jews don't allow anybody to say kike. Right. And they don't make that word a norm. Mm. Black folks call each other nigga all day. And don't tell me that lie that the word nigga, we repurposed it to show love to each other. Because I've been around when blacks got shot. And I heard somebody yell, fuck you, nigga before shooting him. So that wasn't a loving word. When a woman says these niggas ain't shit, it wasn't loving. I'll kick your ass, nigga. It wasn't loving. So we got to stop trying to turn words that are bad and say they're good. Because words are powerful. And you as a man of the Bible, you know this. Mm -hmm. These words, there's a reason why they call it spelling. Because when you put these words on them in the Bible, when it talks about you're damning someone, these are the words you use to condemn them. When you call yourself a bad bitch, yeah, I'm that bitch. Mm -hmm. You have turned every word that we know that they mean something, not only bad, but evil. And we've all placed them on ourselves as blacks. Mm -hmm. and you don't think mm -hmm. we've started to live those demons, those spells we put on ourselves? Hell yeah. Yeah, I, I think so. Absolutely. And when I was talking about um, correct her with what she's saying, not to like we I call out wickedness amongst our people. Like my, mm -hmm. my general commander, Jenny Hunter, does a radio show every Monday where he calls out wickedness. That's that ain't really what I'm talking. About. I was talking about more like that's why I gave the example of when George Floyd clearly died from a knee on his neck. And she said he died from fentanyl. That's I'm saying stuff like that. So I, that, that's what I mean when correct. You can tweak anything, like any anything that anybody does. You can say, no, don't do it like this. Do it like that. But the part that you said that she should be allowed to say what she's saying about blacks or say what she's as long as she can say what she's saying about Jewish people or Chinese or whatever. I do agree with that. So I guess you didn't really have a, a fight there. I guess we like tag team and shit. We like didn't, Yeah, we, we looking. I'm looking for a place. I'm trying to give them something. But I don't really have a critique because that's why I'm silent as hell when you're talking. Right. Because if somebody's saying something, I hate, and I don't know if you've ever seen it, but I hate when you're 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 going in and you're doing a good job, mm -hmm. and the other nigga gotta say something to try and amen you. And you're like, you know, if if, if you believe in what I'm saying, let me fucking finish saying. It. Right, right, <laughs> right, right, right. I agree. I agree. That's why I like your homeboy in the back. <laughs> he just hyping you to keep going. He the guy I need. I'm saying I need somebody on my team like that. I need this. Get him, nigga. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Make me. He don't need no Red Bull. You just need him. <laughs> so, now, so let me ask you a question. So now maybe I'll see if there's something we could disagree on. So mm -hmm. with the title, is it the black man's job to protect the black woman? What's your answer? I'm going to say, don't 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 do like that. Don't put the pressure on me. <laughs> See, now you give me that light skin nigga look. Next thing I know, you gonna have my wallet. Here you go, nigga. <laughs> here's my here's my social security number. Fuck it, here it is. You gonna have it. no? Let me say. <laughs> what it, what happens is, I kind of view it this way. I think you should protect them, but I think it should be like a club, an exclusive club. Mm. You have to meet the criteria to be in this club to get this protection. 
If you don't, we don't protect you just because you're black. If we convince these women that just because they're black, they're supposed to have someone protect them, that's when we get anybody in the club. And I don't believe that. I don't want that. I think that's bullshit. So that's why I believe in it has to be some standards and they have to be stringent. Because other than that, you have people, as we used to say in college, you have a lot of black men who've been on dummy missions. Mm. If you look at what happened with, um, I bring this up a lot. If you bring this up, if you look at the guy on the Steve Harvey show, um, why did I do, uh, the one that plays Romeo on the show, uh, Merlin Santana, he was murdered by a group of black men who <laughs> believed a black woman who told them that he had R worded her. Right. But it wasn't true. He just didn't want to talk to her anymore. There was a, 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 a football player by the name of Travis. I can't remember. Rudolph, I think. Mm -hmm. He ended up shooting. Some yeah, I, I know the story. Travis Rudolph. He, he went to court you know? and everything over that because. I think, and won. Right. He won in court because, I think won court court. because they found out that he had another woman and then told yes. his brother and them. He was married. Mm -hmm. But told her husband. That this dude had uh, had had uh, sexually violated her, mm -hmm. so the husband get his brothers mm -hmm. to go kill him, and he just got lucky and was armed. Right. But remember, those men were manipulated. They had no idea. <laughs> they didn't know she was lying, and because women get away with lying, they lie more than anybody. They telling you kids are yours that aren't yours. They getting their brothers to want to fight you. Mm -hmm. I had my own cousin got me, my brother, and one of my cousins to go fight the dude she was in a relationship with. Four months later, guess who was at the Thanksgiving dinner? Mm. That dude we just beat up. And then when me and my brothers, we got up, we was like, hold on, this ain't cool. She bringing him. Right. I don't know why y'all tripping. We back together. Why don't y'all get over it? Damn. Girl, this man can come in here and kill us. Right. Because of what y'all did. What we did, thank you. You think he forgot what we did to him? Mm -mm. So that's why I mean, no, we can't just protect them because they black. They have to meet a standard. And if you don't meet that standard, I'm going to leave you out in the wilderness. So no one, one, one follow up question before I respond. Um, do you do you let them all in first to vet them or how would how would you go about it? If you're not doing it just because of their black, how do you, I like, wish a criteria for the club that you're speaking about. You remember, yeah, remember I said that? Yeah. Like the, you got, you got to meet these criteria before. Like, okay. I, here's one thing I think. I think the reason we have a big problem with this whole protect and mentor, I hate both of them words. Mm -hmm. We don't need mentors. We need fathers. Mm -hmm. You don't need protect. You need family. Because let me tell you something. My daughter is not looking for a random man to protect her. Do you know why? Because she got you. She got a father. She got uncles. And I'm sure if you have little girls, right. they're not looking for an outside man. You know who they're going to call when shit get deep? Yeah. My daughter had a um, car accident. Um, she was okay. She immediately called me. Dad, I get in this car accident. You know, what do I do? And then, you know, she was tough when she was talking to, my mo to her mother. But then she talked to me. She broke down and all that stuff like that. So I know exactly, but she knows she can call me. So I, I get exactly what you're talking about. I get it. You, you listen, you've been light skinned all your life. I'm gonna keep fucking with you. Oh, you've been light skinned all your life. <laughs> and you remember back in the day when you was in the street for you got married. <laughs> Who was the easiest girl? Oh, it's just light Who's the easiest girl? Who's the easiest girls to manipulate? The ugly one. Girls without fault. Oh, girls without fun. Oh, yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is what I yeah. He was <laughs> yeah, I wasn't going there. He's a misogynist. <laughs> he said you ugly women. God dog. Oh God. I did not know I was on the show with a misogynist. I didn't sign up for this. Uh, ugly. I love the woman. I, I would never call y'all ugly. I would never, <laughs> never say this. <laughs> what I <laughs> the ugly was, I would love to have that shit. We were doing this on Family Feud. <laughs> oh, really? 
<laughs> Damn. <laughs> You got a point, but I wasn't going there. That's number two on the list. It wasn't the number one. The survey said it wasn't number one. Not number one. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Right. But number one was, I believe, the fatherless ones. You ever notice that? The ones who don't have a father because they're the ones who need simple shit that if they had a father, they wouldn't need it. You know how many chicks I fucked because they needed their phone bill paid? You know how many chicks I fucked because they needed simple shit that, like, my daughter... You ain't gonna get the if you fuck my daughter, it's not gonna be because she need her phone bill paid because she's a father for that. Mm-hmm. It's not gonna be because she need you to buy her some dinner that night or she needs some move some money from for, for Uber Eats. She got a father for that. Girls who have a father, you gotta do a little bit more. Now, if you if you got if you if your daughter a hoe, then she she fucking not for money because she got a daddy for that. She just fucking because she a hoe, but she's not easily manipulated because of what you have. She right. already got it. But you ain't give you know me the criteria get it. yet, though. Get it. You ain't give me the criteria. No, no, before I go, you ain't give me the criteria yet for the women that you're going to no, Well, see, what I'm trying to say is that idea is we need people who understand mm-hmm. the role of men first. Okay. If you don't have respect for men, you cannot come in this club. And every girl who has a father, you know what she has? A healthy respect for men. One of the first things, she, one of the first men she loves is her father. And she knows how to love her father. And what she does is carry that in how she handles men. Just like how I was talking to these people, and I was telling you about that, and I love to be able to talk about that one day. Mm-hmm. But the, the girl up in, um, in Brooklyn, the two girls who got stabbed, well... I kept saying this one thing and nobody would say it back. And I hate it. I kept saying, they kept saying, as a man, he should know better than to put his hand on a woman. He know he's stronger than her. If she hit him, so what? He should have walked away. And I said, why is it that women never say what a woman should have done? Have you noticed when you talk to black women, they can tell you more about what a real man is than a real woman? Their yeah, father would have told her about the dangers of being out that late with the, and being around men just like that. Like that, when that mother says, in that video, when that mother says that, you can tell she's just a naive woman. She's a naive woman, just like all these women are naive that think you're going to go amongst wolves and think Woo! respect rules. Wolves don't respect rules. rules. They're looking for sheep. And you're the sheep. So now, now what I want to highlight as I go backwards, right? You see, now, you see how you said it was a lot of girls I fucked because I had to pay their phone bill. You see how you said that? No, I said I could easily manipulate them by something as small as a phone bill. I could do that because I knew they couldn't go nowhere else. Right. That's what I'm saying. So now. You didn't have another man that could do it without. Get without them giving something. Right. Most women without fathers get to the point where they believe that they have to barter their body for. No, things. I agree. No, no, I agree with that. I just want to, like, I always try to show two sides. So, tell me, I'm going I'm to end up using what you said because um, mm-hmm. when it comes to black men protecting black women, the black man has to be educated to not fuck that woman to pay a phone bill too. The black man has to have that education also. Just like the woman shouldn't think that she has to use her body to pay that bill, the man has to learn he can't manipulate that woman knowing that she's going to use her body to pay that bill either. That's how you protect her. Like if that was- See, here's where you messed up at. Here's right. where you messed up at. Come on. Come on. You said who was the easiest to manipulate? Who'd you say was? I, those without fathers. No, you did oh, no, not. Said, what did said, you I say? Said, I said ugly women. <laughs> I said ugly. I said ugly. And let me tell you something. Right. I didn't grow up like you did. Right. I wasn't handsome. So therefore, I had to get it the way I had to live. So what I did was open up my wallet. I got now. But no, Tommy, I'm I'm, I'm not using you personally. Like I'm not personally charging. I'm just using your example for a bigger picture. Meaning this. When we talk about the wolves going to the sheep, the protection isn't just so I wait, wait let, me, let me let me back up first. My answer to the question of is it a black man's job to protect a black woman? My answer is directly yes. My answer is boo. my you said boo <laughs> boo boo <laughs> my answer my answer is every black woman 
to be protected, right? Now, but I also, but I agree with you with a box. You got to let them in. That's why when you was talking, I said like a club, right? You said, yeah, I do agree with that. I just don't have no criteria to get into the club, meaning every black woman, like in this building I'm at, there's a door at the building that I'm at. Every single black woman can come into that door and sit down in here and I'll protect them. Now, the only way they leave out this door is if they don't want to abide by the rules that will garner the protection. Because like you said, most of them grew up without fathers. So they so goddamn simple. They think they're going to go outside at two in the morning with a scantily clad dress. And when the man that thinks she's a whore because of the scantily clad dress, because he wasn't raised properly, which we can address in a second, goes to talk to her. You want this guy to have morals at two in the morning. Nigga got a hard dick, probably drunk as hell. And you want him to have morals at two in the morning. Whereas a father is like my daughter. One, if I'm, this is the only personal thing I'm going to say. My daughter, I thank the most high. My daughter was not a 2 a.m. hanging out in the morning woman. A 1 a.m., a 12 a.m. I knew oh, man. my daughter was graduating up to college that she didn't hang out in that type of environment. Now, and to be honest, it's not even something that I forced on her. I just taught her the dangers. Black women don't, don't understand what danger is. Black women assume that you're supposed to know that I'm a woman and this ain't right because they grew up without a protector. So now when you bring the protector, so when all them black women come in here, I'm going to tell them, don't dress that way. But part of the reason why you're being attacked is because of the way you dress. Now, with that said, you can get attacked without being addressed, but excuse me, without dressing a certain way. But we know statistically it's because of the way that you're dressed statistically. So now you got to change the way you dress. You got to change that mouth. You got to change if you're going to sleep with this man and have kids with this man. Child support is not the answer because you're angry at him. Start to argue. Deep now, at the surface level, the black woman is going to say, that's not going to protect me. I got to put him on child support. Here's why you don't put the man on child support. When you put him on child support and he's not able to be around because he's paying a bill, now he get angry at you. You know who, ne who gets neglected? the protection that they're going to need the same children that you once was that you didn't have protection for with why you running out here with no protection in the first place. Remember my slogan, my slogan is correction with the protection. So you have to correct them. So I would now the only way that woman leaves here is if after I lay out all the rules that she's supposed to follow and she decides she don't want to follow them rules then she can't stay here because that's the only way you get it. You have to abide by the rules. So that's my position on correction. Do should we protect black women? Listen, <laughs> you said it before we got on here. I didn't know it would be like that. Right. The agreement. I want to cry almost. Because I felt so alone, and I'm not even going to lie. I felt alone because I kept saying, why aren't they hearing me? Mm -hmm. I'm saying that as a woman, why is it that no one's saying, if an irate, drunk man approaches you at 2.30 in the morning, mm -hmm. walk away. Don't engage. But I kept saying, I think black women got a death wish. Mm hmm they will walk up to these thug niggas that they know they are, slap one of them, punch one of them, call him a puss ass nigga in front of his friends and, you, and expect him to say, that's a woman. I shouldn't touch her. But when are we going to put restraints, restrictions and expectations on women? Shouldn't she say, I'm a woman. I shouldn't try to diss this man and embarrass him in front of those other men. Right. I'm a woman. If you get loud, I'm going to let you have it because I know you stronger than me. Let me tell you something. If I'm in the street and a big old grizzly bag go, raw, nigga, raw, you black motherfucker. I'm not going to say, who you calling black? Right. 
This is a grizzly bear. You won today. Now, when I come back with a shotgun, what'd you say, grizzly? But if I don't have that, you win. It's just like what happened to me in Harlem. People kept telling me, them niggas jumped you. You didn't do nothing back. Listen to what you're saying. I got jumped by a bunch of niggas, and I'm from Atlanta, and they in, I'm in Harlem. What the fuck I look like saying, oh, King Kong ain't got shit on me. That's so crazy. <laughs> niggas want you to go on dummy missions, and it's because they're raised by dummy women who sit up here and think, What's the best thing for you to do is be loud right then. Ah, ah, ah. You know, a mother the, the stupidest thing you can do. Go ahead. You know, you know even the Bible tells you, didn't it say it's better to be a live dog than a dead lion? No, nah, you're gonna have to get that one for me. But um look it up. <laughs> <laughs> look it up. It's like crazy. So now, now the thing with the expectation that women have, and I hope the women that are listening um, to Tommy and myself, protection does not come without you listening. Your obedience is required. And obedience is something that you say that to a black woman, they're like, I ain't no dog. But black right. black men, when when from my from my experience in teaching. Black men don't have a problem being obedient, but black men are meant to me. But men in general are mentally more practical. Women in general are more emotional and words bother them. And since they were kids, women were taught that men are not supposed to hit boys and women. What? Say again. No, women are, oh, not, no, supposed, men are, men are not supposed to hit girls. Right. We are told men or boys are not supposed to hit girls. I remember I got a twin sister, right? I'm growing up with my twin sister. And because my mama teaching me, you're not supposed to hit girls. At will, my sister just popping the shit out of me. But, and I'm, whoo, I wasn't even hitting back because I'm thinking you ain't supposed to hit no girl. Then one day my mama saw the shit. And so my mama say, why you ain't hit him back? Hit him back, Tyree. And I'm, I'm listen, I'm old now. So whenever I tell a story or when I add live, I'm I'll be saying like motherfucker in my head. But I, as a kid, I'm like, well, you told me I ain't supposed to hit girls. And my mother said, the next time she hit you, hit her back. Oh, let me tell you something, Tommy. I was waiting. Mm. I, I, <laughs> I was waiting. I didn't say nothing. I just kept it to myself. And lo and behold, my sister came and hit me one time. I hit my sister back. We never had another hitting back. We never had. She When I say she never laid a hand on me again because I hit her back. And when women grow up with that mentality and society teaches that, I'm going to give you two sides. Um, Jay-Z got ridiculed in that goddamn elevator when Solange was going off. Now, Jay-Z sitting there. Jay-Z sitting there. Damn near shaking them blows, shake, shaking in his boots. Salons going off. She kicking her feet, doing all of that. And people made fun of Jay Z for not hitting that woman back. When, if we go by the way we was raised, why wasn't he applauded? Here's the flip side. Ray Rice woman spit on his ass in a goddamn elevator, and he knocked her ass out. He ain't carried a football since. So society, when it comes to black men, society they to, put them in a they put them in a catch twenty two. They put them in a rock and a hard place. He can't win. Exactly, society black men can't catch a break. Whereas you are saying don't hit, and when I don't hit, I get made fun of. I'm called a pussy. I'm called a sissy. But then when I defend myself because I'm getting spit on, now I can't play football no more. So what is a man, what is a boy supposed to do? And you get stuck in those type of situations. Another point, when the woman is usually telling a man, you ain't supposed to hit me back, it's never the nerd type of black man. And, and that environment that that young girl was in that unfortunately got her stabbed, those wasn't nerd black men that she was doing that with. These is for all intents and purposes, niggas that hang in the street, niggas that ain't got no daddies teaching them to have any type of respect because 
because young boys are not raised to have respect because they don't have fathers, they looking at women, unfortunately, like this, this, I just want to preface this before I say this wild shit I'm about to say. Women, everything I'm saying is to <laughs> He said, let me preface this before I say this fuck shit that's coming next. I want everybody to know what's coming. Unfortunately. Well, I think it's two reasons why you get away with saying the same shit I say. One, because you say it with a smile and you got them waves in your head. And two, because you're light skinned. I, I, I knew you were going to say the same shit. No. I knew you was going to say it. I don't like this. When you say it, they're like, yeah. I'm like, that's what the fuck I said. I knew you was gonna say that. But I'm gonna tell you. But I'm gonna tell you. When a boy, a, a boy has a child. Excuse me. If a boy has a mother, and that mother is promiscuous and kicked the man out the house, he grows up hating women. When he looks at the woman, he looks at her like a piece of meat. I'm going to abuse her. I'm going to use her. I'm not going to value her because there was nothing that you taught him to value of you as a mother. But when they're outside looking at these women and that woman say no, because they don't even have respect for their mama, they damn sure ain't going to have respect for you. So when you say no, it's not going to compute in their head. And then if you say it aggressively, they're going to think I'm going to push back. I'm going to fight back because that's all they know. Because in fact, our men are just as emotional as their mothers. If they were raised by their fathers, they wouldn't be emotional like that. So unfortunately, can you repeat that? I think maybe the mic wasn't working a little bit. I think it might have went out a little bit. I couldn't hear it. <laughs> I just want to make sure that I heard this correct. Please say this again. When men are raised by what? What happens? When, when men are raised by their mothers, they are lacking fundamental practicality. Practicality of rules, ethics. That's why we, you'll see every... All you got to do, just like how Tommy brought out earlier, the easiest victim is women that are, excuse me, daughters that grow up without fathers. You can easily know a man that grew up without a, a father also by how emotional they are, how irrational they are. They're illogical. When you tell them no and they respond with, why are you telling me no? Why I can't get it? That's because that's what they see women do. When you tell a woman no, mm. they lose their goddamn mind. So a child, a boy that's brought up by his mother, when she says no, excuse me, when he hears no, he responds like what he sees. So he don't see the practicality of there might be a reason why I can't go here. There might be a reason why I can't do this. There might be. A, it's just why can't I go? I want to go because that's what they're used to. When you, when, when your sisters uh, have them conversations with your girlfriends and you hating the girlfriends and you talking and you being that chatty patty, you know who hears that? The children hear that. This is all say it again. This is all yes. correction. This is this is this is all correction to protect you. Everything that I'm saying. It's gonna sound like it's not. Now, for for I'm I'm gonna flip the conversation so you can understand. If I was talking to black men, I would say this. Black men, black women will stop being whores when you stop loving whores. That's facts. If we didn't buy facts. pussy, black women wouldn't have pussy to sell. If we didn't applaud and go into the strip clubs and drop the dollars, then black women would get another occupation. But we love hoes. We love strippers. We love abusing women. We love doing all that. Now, when I tell that to black men, black men come into my organization and we stop turning our women into whores. And I'm flipping it and saying it like that so that the people that are listening on Tommy's side can know that although we're talking about black women, we also correct black men too. Now, the sad part about this is whenever I'm correcting black men, I never have to flip it to black women so that black men will accept and hear what I'm saying. But because I know how emotional women are, we can't have this conversation that long about black women without throwing something else in there so they can say, okay, he did say something about the black man. So I can listen to him. He ain't really dogging just the black woman out. He dogging the black man out too. Because women struggle with correction. That's also protection. You got it. I think they struggle with accountability. And I tell you what, we, we gotta be like 
I, like everybody told me when you talk to this brother, y'all gonna have a debate, and it was like, I can't wait to see it. And I think what has surprised most people mm -hmm. is how close we are in we see things, maybe not say them the same. Right. We see right and right and wrong and wrong. Like whenever I quote the Bible, some of the people in your comment section said, Tommy made that up. Let me tell y'all something. If I quote the Bible, when I quote the Bible, that's one thing y'all know. I'm a pastor's son. If I quote the Bible, I quote the Bible correctly. What does that say, sir? That says, for to him that is joined to the living, there's hope for a living dog is better than a dead lion. Look at Tommy. I told you he was a preacher. He <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey. Ecclesiastes 9. He four, five. I, if I said it, that's why they don't like me. That's why they bring up all kind of shit right. about me other than what I said. Right. Because what I said is correct. Mm -hmm. And again, so and, and that's what's said. Go ahead. And that's why what I want to chime in, I want people to realize like um, Tommy and I, at some, at, at, there's going to be some conversations that Tommy and I are probably going to be heated at each other in disagreement, right? In respect. Now I ain't talking about no disrespect for nothing like that. But then there's also going to be conversations that we agree. And I was talking to my brothers about this. Like even the last com the last conversation that we had, I'm using the word conversation because at the surface level, it's supposed to be a battle, but it ends up being a conversation that even in the difference, people can see two people from two different sides of the spectrum. And I told Tommy this private privately. I said, everybody was expecting me to just come in here like, F you, Tommy. Tommy, why are you doing it? Why are you doing that? And I'm saying to myself, why would I come in here with a preconceived notion when I should just hear what the brother say? And then if he says something I disagree with, I'll disagree with him. But I ain't got to say F you, Tommy, to disagree. I think Tommy and I are going to break the record of two people that the earth hates Tommy, the earth hates Tazaria, and we can come together, take these two audience, and they can say like you just said. They kind of saying similar things. Maybe it's because of, of my, my brother Kadazad calls me like Captain America because he says I could get away with saying anything, but he don't say because it's because of <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know why I can hey, the brother in the comment section. One of your own people call you Captain DeBar Tazaria. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I was up here, I, did, I didn't interrupt, but I was up here dying laughing. He wrote it in your comment section. I was dying, Captain DeBar. Yeah, so Captain DeBarge is funny. That that y'all oh, y'all 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 racist, man. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Y'all ain't racist. I'm just joking. <laughs> that is messed up, man. You ain't supposed to be like that. But yeah, so on, <laughs> on, 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 on the debate, on a debate topic though, on, on the subject, we have to like if 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 the answer is no. That we don't protect black women, then who's going to protect them? Like, I mean, essentially, like we're all we got. You can't say let the white man protect them because if we say let the white man protect the black woman, the white man gonna take that black woman and turn her against us, which is what he's done. Just like, but shouldn't protection come with a cost? Hell, yeah. like it should come with a cost. Someone on one of my shows brought up something, and it was cool. It was a young lady, it's a black lady. Mm -hmm. She brought up what the Ger what the these uh, women did. Right. The Germans had taken over the land, and the right. German men, because what they would do is they would kind of like lions. They would come in and they would take the women, but mm -hmm. uh, they would murder the men. Right. Well, what they did was they said, "Well, the men got to go," but they offered the women who they had beaten their men. They said, "You can stay here with us and keep all of your belongings." Or you can go with the men, but we're going to strip you of all of your belongings. Only You can only take what you can carry on their back. Mm -hmm. And those women, that tribe, chose to carry only what they had on their back to still be with their defeated man than to be concubines of the winning women. Mm. Now, I'm going to tell you something, right? As you say that, I'll be listening. I, I, boy, they got these black women out here. Mm. I'm, I'm going to have to say it. I'm just going to have to say it. So they got black women out here. And again, this is now take now we go. I'm going to use what Tommy said. This is going to be another lesson in correcting for protection. Because Tommy said 
Shouldn't say say what you said again. Shouldn't they have to uh pay for something? Shouldn't they have to pay for it, right? Yeah, it should be a cost for it. Like oh. that, like they, they don't have the Secret Service get paid, right? So there's a cost for this. So now that here's here's a lesson you could take from the history lesson Tommy just gave. I hear black women that dog black men, and they point out how we so called lost. To the white man. So, like in that analogy, to the white man. Yes. So, in that analogy that you gave, you you said how they would rather win or lose with their man. Black women have to understand that the cost of the black man costs them too, and they have to pay and stay with us. Like this, like you're not you're not supposed to abandon your man if he lose. And you know what's the messed up part? You know how many black women support niggas in jail? That ain't that a loss too? Like you ain't ooh. you ain't supposed. To. <laughs> Tell me when you say that. Ooh, your boy in the background. I hear him. Look at him. There you go. I knew we could not go a whole show without him. We need him. We need shirts with him on there, but he ain't on there. It's just a blank. But <laughs> but so, that, so everybody will wear that shirt. We need yeah. him. Like black black women, black women want to be protected, but you can't get protected by the man you're dogging. You know how inspired. Listen, there ain't nothing more inspired. A, a woman don't don't even realize how powerful she is. A woman is so powerful. Wars get started over women. The Bible says mm -hmm. the strongest thing on the planet outside of God is a woman. There really ain't nothing. A woman can be the pain of, of a man's existence or the heaven of a man's existence, depending on how he treats, she treats him. And she ain't, she, if she, if she says the right things with her mouth and what I'm saying is in the Bible now, since we brought up the Bible in first Peter's three and one, it says with the conversation of the woman, she wins over that man. This is this is first Peter, the book of first Peter, chapter three, verse one. I'm going to read it real fast. It says, likewise, ye wise. Now here, when you said the cost, now you're going to get the cost and you're going to get the benefit. It says, likewise, ye wives be in subjection to your own husband, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. Now, if your conversation is that of a bull dagger or that of a goddamn hey. lion, that man ain't going to listen to you. That man is not even going to want to talk to you. But now, if you come to that man and you got a reverence in your voice, a calmness in your spirit, there is nothing that he's not going to want to do for you. So black women, if y'all want the protection that you're required, it's going to require your obedience as the scriptures say, because all of damn, all of them Christian, Tommy, all of them Christian women. You start reading that mm -hmm. Bible where they got to be obedient. The Bible says wives love uh, or obey your husband as unto the Lord. That's what you know about costs. How did you listen? The way you obey God is the way you have to obey your husband. Period. You say that word obey. Yeah. If yeah. you ain't if when you say obey to a black woman, if you ain't talking about uh crab seasoning. <laughs> they ain't trying to hear it. They are not trying to hear it. That's right. And he's That's right. You know, right. and you write about it. And you write about it. If I meet a woman, the first I use words on I use obedience on purpose. Obey. I like to look in the eyes when I say obedient and see if the demon come out. Like, like if they start trembling a little bit, them eyes start twitching. I like to see when I use certain words because that'll let me know how much of a fight I'm gonna have. If they come out right, what you mean obedient, obey? No, I don't know if, if I want this woman to be my woman. She could be a woman. We could, I, hey, you might want to get into school so we can learn and we can teach you. But now, if that woman starts learning to be obedient and learning to listen, she'll be a monster. What I mean by monster, not in a bad way. Usually, I know usually I say monster like a gremlin. She'll be one of the most beautiful creatures. A black woman in her right spirit is the 
most beautifulest creature on the planet Earth. I saw. Look at how you corrected yourself, right? You didn't notice what you just did for yourself. Mm -hmm. When I said monster, be right, right. Me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you literally, because I was talking earlier mm -hmm. about spelling and spells we can put on ourselves. About right. the bad thing. You literally caught yourself correct. in mid-sentence. Facts. That's correct. Because that's important. Are. And because self correction is something you rarely see. No, definitely. And we have to do that. That black woman is the most beautiful if, if she's in the right spirit. I saw you put a post up about your lady. You, what type of steak was that you had? Beef Wellington. Beef Wellington. That's it. Now, his woman make him a beef Wellington steak after he did his work. I'm pretty sure there ain't nothing Tommy ain't going to do for that lady. Now, imagine he get done. He got six piece nuggets or a four, four from Wendy. <laughs> 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 he gonna look at that, and then she say something like, "Well, you was working too late. I, I, I ain't had time to be cooking up all night, or whatever." What nigga want to eat that four for four? I don't even want the four for four. I don't even want it. But now, when when you reverse it, and something as simple as that will get a woman anything that she wants, and that's what a woman thinks. And a woman thinks her education is her power. You know how many educated, rich black women is single? That's another thing y'all got to get corrected on. I was I saw this thing where and here's a difference between a man and a woman. I saw that I was listening to this audio. This woman said it's so many rich, educated black women and they want to marry a man that's also rich and educated like them. And they're so scarce. Women miss the entire mark. Your wealth and education does not guarantee that you're even good at relationships. All it means is that you were smart enough to get an A in this class. And your resume was good enough to get hired here. But you could be a horrible wife if you don't have the basic relationship skills. And whereas a man, he don't listen. Most men don't care what a woman does, to be honest. She could be you ever go in Starbucks, get you that coffee and that woman behind the register. She looked like the one that you can build a bear with. But I mean by build a bear, you have to be a little older. I used to have, my daughter, I used to take my daughter to the build a bear store. So you know, you go in the build a bear store, you pick the color bear you want, you pick the type of buttons you want to go in the belly, you pick the type of hat, you dress the bear up. When we look at a woman, we look at a woman like I can build her, I can make her, I can mold her. Now we think about that with the woman that work at Starbucks and the lawyer. Because what black what black men know about women is no matter how educated they are or how uneducated they are, they're nothing without my touch. What black women were raised to believe is that they don't need the touch of a man. They don't need that. Let me tell you something. That, that is so true because there's a video that was out there, and it may still be out there. It went viral. Where I was at Starbucks. I was ta I had taken my daughter to get some Starbucks. And then I went back. I said, well, let me get something else. Because she asked me to get one thing. I took her to school. And I flew in from Arizona to do it because I used to live in Arizona. But she still went to school in Georgia. Right. I was that kind of damn dad. So she wanted me to get something else because my daughter spoiled. So I had to go pick this up and bring it back to the school. I think she just liked me taking stuff to the school. So when I was there, the black girl behind the counter was a young black girl. And mm -hmm. she was didn't say hello to me, didn't say anything. White man came behind me. Mm. Hi, I'll be with you just a minute. And I was like, God. So I turned my camera. And I said, you know me. I turned my camera. And I said, y'all see how these black women treat black men? She told right. me and did this. It went viral. Well, the people at uh, Starbucks called me and said that you know I got this stuff free. You got we were gonna make sure you you taken care of because they saw it. And then, but the black girl DM me on Instagram was like, you got me fired from my job, and now people are doing this. I said, well, why did you treat me like that? I didn't see you, and she was calling me all kinds of coons and whatever. Well, I clicked on her profile. Right. I said, I don't should be arguing with this woman. This woman fine. <laughs> I didn't know what she looked like outside of that, that outfit. <laughs> I said, ma'am, I'm sorry. Let me, let me bitch is that thing you know I was beating this woman's back out. We were together in a relationship. Now, I didn't care the fact that she just said, I don't have a job at all. Right. Why? Because I said, I could, I think I see something I can have with this woman 
that could be long term. Right. But you're 100 percent right. Whenever they sit up there and say, oh, I got to educate. That ain't what that man want with you. Mm -hmm. That man wants to see long term. And we do it like people don't get it. We can see a woman and say, I see long term with you. Right. And when we see that, we will run through a brick wall for you. Remember, Adam actually disobeyed God for a woman. Samson couldn't beat by a man. Couldn't get right. beat by a man. A woman brought him down. Mm -hmm. Hey, you want me to give you another example? I was going to give another example. Uh, this com this uh, comedian, Desi Banks, uh, he does YouTube videos and stuff like that. Pretty funny from Atlanta. He was doing an interview. He was saying how the woman he was with left him because she didn't even see his vision. This brother used to pump out uh, videos like little skits, like comedy type sketch videos. And of course, in the beginning, it's slow. You building up, trying to get the business going. And she left him. That cat's a millionaire now. And she left him because she didn't want to see his vision. That like somebody taught her that. Like if we got to protect the black, the first thing we got to protect the black woman from is the white man. And I know people won't understand that. Right. People won't understand that. But black man and black woman there's a puppet master that pulls both of our strings. And if we don't recognize that somebody taught her she didn't need a man, we didn't teach her she didn't need a man. But somebody taught her she didn't need a man. So the first form of protection and the debt she owes, she owes an apology to the black man for abandoning him. And then you know what the black man going to do? He's going to say, I'm sorry, too, because we don't have a problem. Now, we break that compassion and break that barrier, the great gulf in between us. And we can have compassion. Then we'll fix every single problem in the black community. If we do that. Guarantee. Because you know, think about it. That girl, Drea, she just had a baby by this man, Jalen Green, who got two other women pregnant at the exact same time right now. Good Lord. Yeah, he got There are plenty of men. But he's a young cat. And I was talking today about nobody ever teaches us as black men because we're raised by single mothers. You know what they never tell us to do? Value ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're only there to help somebody pay for something and give them penis when they ask for it. Right. But they never tell you your penis is worth something. So why right. are you giving it out to anybody? Yeah, they don't like and and it's almost like uh, that's like slavery, like breaking the buck. Like, like oh, you could trace a lot of ways that we think because they don't care about his basketball score. They probably couldn't tell you his basketball scores, his fucking point game. His rebounds. All they know is I'm hunting him and his simple ass. Nobody taught him to either put a condom on or not have sex. Nobody taught him what marriage and nobody taught him none of that. So now he got three baby mamas at the same goddamn time. Nobody, nobody is teaching the black community. Like if we failed, like we failed at this job. And so now the only thing and when we go broke, though, we laugh at him. Mm -hmm. We laugh at him. Right. This and these women will move on to the other. So when you have people like me, and that's why I appreciate people like, like you, like you love black women, you wear it, you wear it on your shoulder. Right. And there's nothing wrong with it. I think what people miss women. about me. Yeah, I was about to say, I think they miss it. I love them, but I have seen so much pain that they've caused that I don't think I can give them the leeway that you do. <laughs> because I've seen what giving them leeway does mm -hmm. when you watch somebody like Zion Williams get used by a woman 10 years older than him and nobody points out how is it that we're not saying he's a, a, a kid when she's laying up with him. Right. How is it that a 19 year old woman is a kid and we need to feel sorry for her, but the 19 year old boy that got her pregnant, he a grown man and he need to step up and be a man. Because you're both 19. Up, if that was reversed, if that yep. was that was a 40 something year old man with that 19 year old or 20 year old, they'd be having a fit. He took advantage yep. of her. Why did he do that? He's abusing her. He's using her for her money. That's what they would hear. But for a black woman to a black man, oh, that's a come up. What wait, 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 I I yep. What what's that movie? What's the movie um Angela Bassett was in? Stella got a groove. Stella got a groove back. She was in her 40s, he was 20. They they listen, applauded that. 
Even though he ended up being gay, right? He ended up being gay, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Why you gotta ruin that moment? <laughs> Damn, why you gotta ruin the movie? My bad, my bad. But, but when it was Stella got a groove back, they, I mean, it was not a problem. But if a brother does that, they'll crucify the head. Let, let her older, what's, what's, um, I think it's, uh, what is it, Marquise Houston, if I'm not mistaken? Oh, yeah, he married a 19 year old woman. He married a 19 year old woman. They crucify him for it. Now, I'm not saying I applaud. A, you know, 40 year old marrying a 19 year old. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying in today's society, when it's reversed, it's OK, because here's the other thing that needs to be corrected and, and, and not. I um now I personally have done about four or five lectures on child molestation. Right. In the, especially in the black community. Mm -hmm. All the child molestation that rarely gets talked about is how boys are molested and over sexualized that's the part i mean even that r kelly now he deserved to be in jail for pissing on that little girl but he gonna tell you that his first sexual experience was women how many times do the young boys get over sexualized by the babysitter that's okay but if the girl is touched then that's a problem we and now what does that do over sexualized little boys to where now they think I'm supposed yep. to be having sex. At, the damn community teaches black men, if you ain't having sex at 13, what do they say? You still a virgin? You ain't get you none yet? You lame. If you're not having it. So now you put this unnecessary pressure on young boys to go out there and have sex, where if we taught them properly that sex is marriage, now that's a conversation I don't think black people want to have. Because if sex... Yeah, if because the Bible says sex is marriage. So now if we teaching our kids, don't if you have sex, you marry the value of sex for a woman to value her body, for a man to value his body. A man used to be cheated about your ride. Your ride should be like a goddamn NBA finals trophy, a Super Bowl. You got to get to the Super Bowl to get to this ride. A woman, the same thing. If you don't win this Super Bowl, you can't get to this vagina. That's how they're supposed. But you know what we taught? Your vagina's the playing. <laughs> let me tell. Let, let me tell you something, uh, Cap. Yeah, go ahead. My, my, my mama just. My mama just said to me. She said, "Well, no." She said, "You gotta have a man obeying God, and that woman will easily obey him." Then she said, "He's a nut," and put a big smile. <laughs> Your light skin self done won over my mama. I, 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 I don't like this at all. All right, now don't hate me now, Tom. Right, listen, I, I'm just talking. I'm just talking. You done won over my mama. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Hey, <laughs> right, tell your mom I got some free products, some body scrubs and stuff. I'm sure I got some free products. There you go. She, she'd appreciate that. My mom like this. The, the, the one thing my mom like is free. No problem. You send me the address to send it to. I'm going to send it down to a shout out to Tommy's mama. But I'm just trying to keep it real. Like we're we're not taught in the black community to value each other. We're taught mm -hmm. to live like we're the most socially people. Don't nobody party like us. Ain't nobody over sexualized like us. Ain't nobody selling drugs and getting high like us because nobody is treating us common morals and principles and values. And that protection, excuse me, that lack of protection is why that black boy will stab that girl in the middle of the night. That black boy stabs that girl in the middle of the night because nobody taught him the value. Nobody taught her protection. And when it came time for her to be protected by somebody that was never taught the value, violence happens. And without that correction coming in there, it just ain't going to work. Ever. It's never going to happen if we don't bring it. You know? And, and, it, and it's, we have to come to a, understand, like, like these conversations, are difficult to have right but they need to be had and i think that's another thing that we don't talk about in the black community i was molested at 10 years mm. old by a 25 year old woman mm. who thought that the best thing for her to do was try to sexualize a 10 year old boy that didn't know what it was right. Right. i told the story i told the story mm -hmm. 
I got these two responses. One was, I wish it had happened to me. And two is, he gay if he didn't like it. When I told the story online. Because at 10. When the point is. Because at, at 10. You know, 10. Right. You, like, and and, and this, is, this, is why, this is why I hate the internet sometimes. When they say, I wish it was me. That's him at 30 saying, I wish it was me. Right. That's not that's not him at 10 saying I wish it was like do you know what lack of compassion you're having? Oh, I wish I'd have had that happen to me at 10. At 10 years old, you playing with Tonka truck, you playing with toys, you playing freeze tag or tops. The last thing you're thinking is, I wonder what it's like to sleep with a 25-year-old woman. How does that how does something like that even compute in your brain? And what people should realize, what people should realize is how does a person then go about valuing anything at that point? Thank you. If a 25 year old can come and just do what they want to this 10 year old, you know what just taught that 10 year old? First of all, you took an innocency from him that he can never get back. That's what people, people don't even realize when predators, because that's what she was. She was a fucking predator. When that predator predatorized, they're predatorizing to take the innocent. You telling me that 25-year-old couldn't have gave that vagina away to another 25-year-old man? To a 22-year-old man? To a 20-year-old man? You know why she did it to the 10-year-old? Because it would, did she say to say anything afterwards? Did she say to keep it quiet? No, it was don't say. And, and like, here's what happened. I was able to my, I heard my grandmother had got home, mm -hmm. got home because it was the girl across the street from her. Mm -hmm. uh, Where well, I used to stay until my grandmother got home from school. Right. I heard her and I told the girl I was crying. I said, my grandma's calling me. Please let me go. Mm -hmm. And I ran out of the house, but I didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. And I remember the first time I said something was I was 19 and I said it to the adults. And the adults in my family who I told it, they laughed. Mm -hmm. But now it was funny. But, but before when you do something, but I had to run away from this girl right. because in her mind right. she was getting away with it until she heard an another adult call my name because she heard the right, the right, call my right, name. and is she telling you to be quiet? And she told me don't say yes, right. She said don't say anything, so I didn't say anything until I was nineteen. So I held that shit for nine years until I was adult, and I thought I was in a safe space, and I told them, and then they laughed. And did you did you see her after that? Like after that incident happened? No, I wouldn't go back over there. I kept telling him, but I never told him why I didn't want okay. to go back over there. I okay. did not want to go back over there. There was never no conversation with her after that. You just chose not to go there. No, because I didn't know what I mean. You didn't know what here's the thing that we're as as blacks, especially mm -hmm. in the South. If an adult tells you something that you were doing back when I grew up in the 80s, you're supposed to do it. Like other adults were able to whoop your ass. Right. I'm with you on that. You know, Chris so, Rock made a joke like uh one time he was like, um, we all got that molester uncle. Now, in this case, it was a woman because the worst kept secret in the black community is that you can molest a kid and get away with it. Everybody mm. story. Everybody has a story of somebody getting molested. the whole everybody knows and they just let the molester just roam free. And if it's a boy. If Why it, do you think I called that out at the beginning? What did I say? You calling out coons? You got to, you know, every coon in the neighborhood. But right. your molester uncle, we ain't never heard his no. name on now one of y'all YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. We've never heard you call his name out, that's and you right. know who he is. That's right. Or the molester woman. That's the that's the yep better kept secret than the uncle. Everybody will blame the uncle for molesting boys and girls. Nobody wants to act like the woman does not molest either. And that's because boys are allowed to be over sexualized. We are treated like mules. We are treated like your dick is just made to go inside a vagina at age 10. Now, what I wanted to add, and Tommy, this ain't just about you, but I want to teach what this does because what you're talking about when a predator, the reason why I was asking you, did the predator say, um, don't say nothing? The fact that the predator is telling you not to say nothing lets you know that even they know it's wrong, that they know it's wrong. And if, if it comes out, 
they're going to be crucified for. So now the goal is, after they take your innocency, to keep you quiet. Why? So they can do this shit again. And then what does it do to the child who had their innocency taken away? They learn not to respect no one else's innocency. Why should I respect your innocency when nobody respected my innocency? Why should I treat you like a human being when nobody treated me like a human being? I couldn't tell my auntie. I couldn't tell my mother. I couldn't tell my father what happened to me because you made me be quiet. Now y'all want me to have this level of respect. And then when I got to the A's to tell about it, I was laughed at. That's how R. Kelly went from being the victim to the victimizer. Because he was laughed at. And that's... Yeah, you, you were told... Mm -hmm. You remember, the, have you ever seen the movie Antoine Fis Fisher? No, I only saw it in bits and pieces. I that was one of the only... Watch it. It's one of the only movies that ever addressed the idea of women mm -hmm. molesting. They Antoine Fisher came back to the house when he was grown. He went to the military and stuff. Mm -hmm. And he came back. First off, they were the black women were talking about, what's up, little nigga? God, man. And he went in and he said, do y'all... Yeah, you gotta watch it. It, it hurts to watch it. Okay. He then said, do y'all remember what you did to me when I was little? Mm. They made it seem like he was making too much of a big deal about it. God damn. And that's what happens. But if you think about it, women have always been able to do that to us. Our mothers, when we finally get old enough to tell them how you made me feel when I was a kid, they will say these words. You grown now, apparently it wasn't that bad. Mm. Do you know how many black children have suffered Simply because you can, you can tell your daddy he ain't shit in a minute. So many blacks have told their daddy he ain't shit. Right. You know who you can't say they ain't shit? Your mama. And you know who gets away with more than anything else? We got movies talking about some Miss, who was it? Miss whatever the name she was across the street in Friday. Miss Was she Parker. like sleeping with? Yeah, Miss Parker. Hmm. Always out there for messing with the kids. It's always some grown older woman. Yeah. And everybody... You can talk to any black kids. They can tell you about a grown older woman they had sex with when they were children. Yeah. But like you said, it's the best kept secret because we look at it as it's fine to do it to a boy. We never sit up there and cheer for a girl at 14 who had sex with a dude who was as handsome as Denzel. Mm -hmm. He's still going to go to jail for 30 years. I guarantee you. But if you get sex with a woman who looked like Halle Berry and you 12, we're going to say you lucky. That's a problem with that, that man. Because the lucky kid has no idea what the fuck is happening. He doesn't know what's happening. He don't even know what to do. He's not even prepared. He's scared. He's just, a, he's just as scared as the girl is. But society or the black community encourages that behavior of our young black men. And them black women, them black mothers... Because they hated their fathers and probably hated that boy's father. That's why they say you grown now. It don't even matter now because we were taught not to care about the black man. And all the and just so for all the ladies listening, I hope y'all take heed to what Tommy and I are saying. And if you are dogging your sons out, dogging your baby's father out, or dogging your husband out, you should stop. You should understand the value of that black man. And I guarantee you, if you start putting more value into that black man, just watch the change that he does in your life. I ain't got, listen, I'm telling you what I teach every day. I counsel families. I counsel husbands. I counsel wives. I counsel children. And I always teach the black man to take his role as being a head and the black woman to take her role as being obedient to that head. Now, let's say to the black women that don't have a man. Well, you probably got to dumb it down. Let's say to the black woman that ain't fucking somebody, because if you're fucking somebody, you I'm sorry, if you're fucking somebody, you got a man. You should get up under somebody. If you don't have a father, you can come into our school and then you can learn what it's like to be under a man properly. But that's what it's going to take to actually correct our women. Because if we, again, if we don't do this job, there ain't nobody else that's going to do this job. All you're going to do is be the black woman that continues to get manipulated in America, period, without being up under a man. That, if you want the answer to the question, 
besides yes we should protect them the answer is every black woman should be up under a black man to get the protection that she needs and you can't say you don't like black men if you having sex with them you can't be out here dogging black men if you're constantly having sex with them having ba- the black man ain't shit but then you got babies by two of them black man can't be that ain't shit because I got a tagline for what, what it is you're saying. Since you said you want to at least reach out to the women that's at least sleeping with somebody. I, I think your tagline should be, if he can come into your face, you can come into this place. <laughs> Tell me that won't work. That'd be your tagline for the shirts. If he can come into your face, you can come into this place. There it is. It is. <laughs> Get your shirts now. Get your shirts now. <laughs> <laughs> it make people want to come and go to this. Go to this thing. Like, look, we just saying. Like, we understand you. You are dealing with them. And why is that? Let me ask you this. Okay. Why is okay. that we are okay with this idea? Because let's go back to this whole protection thing. Because I'm confused. Right. Why is it that they're okay with having the babies by the men that they're openly saying? ain't shit how is that a thing how is that okay because that's a reflection on them isn't it if you're laying down with these men what does it say about you you know because unfortunately just like men get horny women get horny too and society pushes i should be having sex a woman a woman naturally for i don't care even a lesbian woman requires penetration and you know who understands that more? The man that's the woman that's playing the role of a man knows that I have to penetrate this woman because a woman requires being dominated. A woman requires me. Mm-hmm. So as she's out there, and and because most of us come up in broken homes, they, after they do all that trash. They do, when they get hot and bothered, they don't even know how to think, just like a man don't know how to think when he picks. So a woman doesn't know how to pick a man because she's never have a, had a father to look up to and teach her to pick a man. And when you know the, 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 the educated woman that I was talking about, there was this famous black woman on the Internet. I'm, what was her name? Cynthia G was a famous black woman on the Internet. That would dog out black women to no, excuse me, black men to no end. I mean, dog them out, said you ain't shit. And she was so super intelligent, Tommy. I mean, she was like, you let her tell it, she was the smartest black woman on the planet. (laughs) Got got pregnant by a nigga that got four baby mamas because black women, I'm going to tell you something. You're not as smart as you think. You educated. And his name was the nigga with the tattoos. That was his name? <laughs> yes, the nigga with the tattoos. That was his YouTube name. <laughs> I, I didn't never knew who the brother was. I didn't know the brother's name. But what I do know... Oh, yeah. They, they, they used to use him against me because he was Mr. Pro-Black. And he would go against me when we found out that he had... I'm not going to say his real name. Okay. They, they know his real name. I'm not about that. But it was the fact that you know how much of an ain't shit bitch you must be when you hid the fact that you was pregnant, hid the fact that you had a kid, right. then hid the fact who you had it with after you out here calling black men bullet bags and stupid yeah. shit like Paula. that. She was one of the ones saying black men was defeated. She was one of them. Yep. So, and that, and that, this, this goes right back to as educated as a black this is this is all about protecting sisters i'm trying to i'm gonna try to give y'all this drink if you can swallow it as educated as you are you are no match for a man ever any man you meet a man as educated as you are if he wants you he will hunt you down and have you you're not that educated I'm telling you, as a father to a daughter, like my daughter was smart, and I would make sure I, t- I would give her the game because I know the game. There ain't a tactic that you have that a man cannot outsmart if he wants you and get it. He will outtalk you. He will hustle you. And then when he's fucking you, and after it's over, you're going to say, how did I let that happen? 
But you, and you know what? You won't even be able to resist him. And then just like Cynthia G, she'll be the same one fighting it because now she's ashamed. When you know what? If she wasn't saying what she was saying, she wouldn't be able, she wouldn't have to be ashamed. What's being ashamed with being in a relationship with a man? Shouldn't have been no shame. Except someone taught her that the type of man that she actually loved was an offense. When really she loved that type of man. I don't know what their relationship is, but if that man gets with you and protects you, why should you be ashamed? If you gotta be ashamed with who you sleep with, this is a good, this is another protection. If you gotta be ashamed with who you sleep with, then you shouldn't sleep with him. That goes for men and women. We should not you sound like my grandma. My <laughs> grandma used to say, if you got a problem with somebody talking about what it is you did, maybe you shouldn't have did it. Facts. Your mom, your grandmama was smart. If you can't go mm -hmm. outside with that woman you slept with, don't sleep with her. If for sure you can't go outside with that man you slept with, don't sleep with him. The only, the most value, women think their education is their value, is their job is their value. The most valuable thing the woman has is her body. That's the one thing. If Annie is outside and I desire Annie, I've had her money before, meaning I made money before. I could have worked at her job before. The one thing I ain't never had, though, was Annie. And as long as Annie don't give me Annie, I'll never have Annie. But if Annie, mm. but if Annie just gives me Annie for nothing, now I don't got Annie. Now imagine Annie ain't just give Annie to me. Annie gave Annie to Danny. He gave Annie to Terry. He gave Annie to now Annie ain't even got no goddamn value no more. It's like who you who you was with? You was with Annie? Oh man, every, everybody had Annie. Now you just yourself. Whereas with a job, you could be working at IBM and then you can go to Chase. Everybody worked at IBM. Everybody go worked at Chase. The difference is there's value if everybody worked at the same job that's paying. If everybody worked at Chase Bank and if you go to Chase Bank, everybody's making 100000 a year, there's value in that. The only place there ain't value that everybody's been at is your vagina. Remember that. That's protection. Hey, man, oh. hey, man, man, you, you talk, you, you talking because I had to express that. I was like, uh, to a young woman, I said, mm -hmm. if this nigga know you in a relationship or he don't care where you are and he screws you, he doesn't see any value in you. No. You can lie to him and tell him every time he call you once every six months, I'm just holding my pussy out for you. He ain't stupid. I talked to a nigga and the nigga told me it was a girl I was dealing with. The nigga told me, man, everybody know that girl you with a hoe. You know how much that hurt me? I thought this was the greatest bitch in the world. Mm -hmm. She loved that nigga and looked at me as a square. Are you okay, Chris? This nigga was like, dude, you wild for liking her past fucking. But she thought he was the greatest thing in the world, was throwing herself at him. Mm. And then for a man to speak about you to your face like that, what does that say about you? It would be like if a woman told, told her about me. Girl, I didn't want this nigga. He a lame. He was just paying my bills. Mm. She feel like crap. Right. But these women will sit up there and just do this disgusting shit and then expect you to, after it's done, if they fucked up, that's why when you talk about that protection, they expect you to just pick up the pieces and say, yeah, I'll be the crash dummy and let everybody look at me and think I'm a joke. Right. Because like you said, you know how much value in they wanted to sleep with you, but they didn't. Instead of they could have sleep with they could have slept with you and did. And many of them could have slept with you and just decided not to. But it wasn't because of you. Mm. It wasn't because you were the one who was being discerning. It, it You just didn't give a crap. Right. And now you're known for this. It don't matter how educated you are. don't matter how great of a job you are. You're literally known as a whole. And ain't nobody trying to sit up there and trust that. Because let me tell you one thing. Even the Bible tells you about building your house on sand. Right. A woman who fuck anyone. Can you marry that woman? Can you ever trust that woman? Hell no. Oh. 
So the Bible say she'll open her mouth to uh, open her mm-hmm. quiver. I'm just trying to find in scripture. Just say talk about her opening up that quiver to everybody. Mm-hmm. It says hey. it's Ecclesiastes 26 and 12. It says she will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler when he had found a fountain and drink of every water near her. By every head she was down and open her quiver against every arrow. For those that don't know what a quiver is, a quiver is what holds the arrows. And you never you ever see them carrying the, the arrows to shoot the bow? So the quiver is the mm-hmm. basket that holds the arrows. And that's what that'll hold. Ecclesiastes what, bro? Ecclesiastes what? No, this is Ecclesiastic cuss uh, in the Apocrypha. I'm a, yeah, um, if you Google, I, I'll send it to you. Hey, uh, Ashley, give me that scripture, Ecclesiastic cuss, uh, so I can send it to him. Which Ecclesiastic cuss, what? What, what, is the, what is the scripture? Got you. It's, uh, one second. I, don't, I just missed it. Hold on. One second. Now, well, I just want to put it on the screen for the people. No problem. 26 and 12. Yep, 26 and 12. What, 26, 12 through, yep. uh, just, uh, 12 through, through uh, Okay. Uh, yeah. Just. Oh wow. So we're gonna put it. We're gonna put it on the screen so everybody yeah, else can see. I'm, I'm big on when when you say things. I don't know if you saw that I was doing it earlier. Oh, you was. was yeah. You was. Yeah. There we go. All right. Now, if you want to go to verse 14, you know it says, "A silent and loving woman is a gift from the Lord, and there is nothing so much Ooh. worse as a mind well instructed." That's what the Bible says. <laughs> That's what the Bible say. That's I think in verse fourteen in that same chapter. No, it says uh, uh, when I was even putting it in there, it said uh, twelve through fourteen came up. So apparently, mm-hmm. a lot of people have been pulling that up because it was yeah. like, hey, it wasn't just twelve. Twelve through fourteen mattered. Yeah. So I guess those are some of those. That, uh, and I will tell you one of the things that my that that my um, mom was talking about that a lot of people don't talk about too. But we were talking about you you um touched on it a little bit earlier mm-hmm. but uh these parents when they will a lot of black parents will quote the bible and they will bring up well a child is supposed to obey the parent so that that days are long mm-hmm. the part that they don't bring up is the second part that says parents do not provoke your children to wrath right so we got parents who are calling their sons and daughters bitch ass niggas ho ass and all these things which is against the bible itself and yet they only quote the one that says well you're supposed to obey your mother and father so your days are long right there's a second half of that glad that you talked about that as well ecclesiastes ain't just 12 it's 12 through 14 Mm -hmm. Uh, ecclesiastes ecclesiasticus right am i saying that right that's correct you're saying it right okay because a lot of times people will take pieces that fit them and they don't take the whole of the Bible. Right. They take the piece that yeah, cherry pick pushes whatever they need. Yeah, they cherry yeah. pick. Yep. Cherry pick it so they can get what makes them feel good. But that that's why I said last week when uh Christ said, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. He never said it's gonna make you feel nice or warm and fuzzy, mm. feel good all over or anything like that. He did not say that. He said it's going to, you know. Man, Christ didn't even, Christ said, I didn't come here to bring y'all together. I'm the sword. Yeah. I came to separate. That's right. And the truth separates. Now we get yes. black women up in here. The, the truth is going to separate. Some women going to stay. I'm going to tell you, a woman, I, 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 I love, like, you correct. When you come to my Passover, because I'm going to let you know, I'm going to make sure your wife feels secure about it. We're going to bring you out there, man, and you're going to see. You're going to be like, damn, Cap. Y'all corrected all these black women? I'll be like, yeah, we corrected them all. Next thing you know, Tommy going to be standing next to me teaching about the word of the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I love the Bible because I, I, I like things where I can learn. Like people always tell me, well, you don't so. I'm like, no, I like something where I can learn it. And here's the, the thing. I am not opposed to applying something to my life that I think can help. And I think right. that people should right. be open to doing that no matter where it comes from right uh i I don't know what you want to do i know some people in your comment section were saying can they join if you would like for them to join they can come up two ways you can give them the link that's above where it says okay in the url where it's okay and your url yeah the one i sent you 
Uh-huh. The one that says streamyard.com uh-huh. forward slash S. Oh, yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. Okay. They call that. Oh, yeah, put it in my chat. You can put that in, in. Yeah, you put it in your chat and you can tell them they can come up that way. Okay. That way they can bring them up. Or another way that y'all can come up if y'all like to come up, you can go to my uh, Twitter, which is it's just it's Mr. Sotomayor. That's I T S M R S O T O M A Y O R. You can come up there and just get in the space, put your hands up, and I can bring you up that way. But um, he's going to put the link out there if y'all yeah, want to come up there and ask. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Either of us, any questions, whatever y'all want to bring up to us, free info or whatnot, yeah. we are here for y'all. Link if you want to join. And I put the link. I put the in link. Every one of my yeah. conversations as well. The link in my chat. Hold on. Let me um share. Let me. I'm gonna pin it. I'm gonna actually pin it to the top. So they can join. Mm-hmm. Screenshot that there. And let me pin this to the top. I, I keep clicking. No. There we go. Pin the message. So I just pinned it. So if y'all want to click that link, you click that link and y'all could join. If y'all want to join myself and Tommy. You could definitely click that link and join. And like like Tommy said, this could be enemy. You could be a friend. You come up here. We prepare for whatever it is that y'all got. Let me go ahead and stretch it out. Just in case y'all see mm-hmm. the shit. <laughs> you gotta get that set ready. You know what? You know, you know what, Gap? Yeah. While we wait on the up here, I'm gonna get you something that's ready. I'm, this right here should get you ready for the oh, okay. for it. this should get all y'all ready. Okay, yeah. This, uh, this should get y'all ready to come up here okay. while I'm going and refill my glass. Here we go. You're this a wrong is ass man. You can call me a troll. <laughs> Did you get what you want out of this? Did it make you feel better now? There's a difference. I don't bother people I don't like. And this is what you have to deal with with niggas. What they built, what they did, what they gained. You want to live off somebody else's law. What they built, what they did, what they gained. You want to live off somebody else's law. Niggas are the worst people on earth. I do understand why they made them slaves. I think one of the worst things that happened was they stopped making them slaves. If they'd have kept niggas as slaves, we'd have built more shit. We'd have been better people. Whenever black people were under the oppression of white people, they did more. They were more productive people. Name the shit you built since being out of slavery. Name it. Name it. Let me explain. You claim you built DC. You were enslaved when you did that. You claim you built the railroad. You were enslaved when you did that. Everything you claim you built in America is when white people had the whip on your ass. What have you built since? Oh, what have you built since? Nobody wants to talk about the facts. Now all you do is go around and begging white people for shit. All these hoods y'all proud of, white people gave them to you. You didn't build them. What they built, what they did, what they gained. You want to live off somebody else's law. What they built, what they did, what they gained. You want to live off somebody else's law. What they built, what they did, what they gained. You want to live off somebody else's law. What they built, what they did, what they gained. You want to live off somebody else's law. Did black people build Cabrini Green? Nope. Nope. Did black people build Capitol Homes? Nope. Did black people build Carver Homes? Nope. Did black people build O Block? Nope. Did black people build any of these things you're talking about? 63rd, 62nd, 69th? Did you build any of that shit? Nope. Did black people build Compton? Wait. Did black people build Compton? Wait. Did black people build Compton? Nope. Let me explain. Oh, uh-huh. uh, uh, Black Wall Street. Come on, bro. Oh, uh-huh. uh, uh, Black Wall Street. Your ass ain't built Black Wall Street back now, have you? You got all these black millionaires and they, all these black millionaires who own clothing companies. You could have been built Black Wall Street back a long time. When you hear all these niggas love to go back to Black Wall Street, that tell you black people are lazy and ain't shit. This person said Black Wall Street. Sir, you remember what Black Wall Street was built under? Jim Crow. I let you know. What they built, what they did, what they gained. You want to live off somebody else's law. 
what they do, what they did, what they gained. You want to live off somebody else's love. What they built, what they did, what they gained. You want to live off somebody else's love. What they built, what they did, what they gained. You want to live off somebody else's love. What have you built? Give me the Black Wall Street 20 years uh, in the last 20 somebody years, last 10 years. Love. Give me that. Y'all niggas can't put together some stores. Because that's all Black Wall Street was, somebody idiot. Else. Stores. Can somebody tell me if I'm lying or not? What was Black Wall Street? Stores. Somebody else. You mean to tell me niggas can't put together a street with stores? Y'all get money from the government. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate everybody watching this. That is Captain Sarriac's favorite song. <laughs> It's his favorite snow. He said he got it right now on rotation on his iPad. I play it in the now, gym. I got, now I got to play this. I watch, I've been watching in your comment section. I want to tell you this. Mm -hmm. I appreciate a lot of the people just listen to us. I really appreciate that. But one, but number two, you got a couple of people in your comment section. One of them by the name of, and he been waiting on me to say his name, so I said, his name is Agent B. Agent, I don't know if it's a white man, like Agent B. Oh yeah, I'm looking. Agent at B. Yeah, every time I would go live, they would just rebroadcast my stuff on YouTube. They would just rebroadcast it. I would be live. They would just rebroadcast it. Mm -hmm. I asked them to stop doing it. They wouldn't stop doing it. So then I flagged their videos, a few of their videos. Mm -hmm. They went from being a Tommy supporter to now they hate Tommy's guts. And that's why you see them writing all that stuff. So you were the Tommy fan until I asked you as a content creator Stop reposting my shit. Right. That, oh, I'm just doing it so I can get my numbers up. Yeah, but it's mine. <laughs> so they kept it. So now, and I want to tell you, you talked about these men. Right. A lot of these men are worse than women. These niggas won't dick more than women do. You had a couple niggas in your comment section who were huge fans. Just and because record, they ain't my niggas, though. I, just for the record, they ain't my niggas. They ain't yours. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, they ain't your <laughs> They ain't yours. <laughs> These niggas are just, they was, they was, they, they hoes. Like they want to be close to a man more than, uh, uh, than women do. And it is crazy that I got these men now. So you done turned into, I hate Tommy now. And everything come out my mouth is coon talk, coon, coon, coon. When you was the biggest fan, talk about so I don't know why they call you a coon. Right. Everywhere I am, that nigga shows up. Go look on their page. You ain't got to question me. Just go look at them. And these are grown men who do this. This nigga sitting up there got good. I got videos of what is that uh, song that 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 show? Um, Phineas and Ferb. Mm. That's what he is. The, the, the Phineas and Ferb, a grown man who does it. Yeah, I, I listen. I and again, he said, I tell the lies. Go click on his page if y'all think I'm lying. I did. I saw it. Go click on it. No, I did it when you was talking. You know I, this I, I did it. I did it. I did it. I saw. I, 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 I saw it. I saw it. And and I go through the same thing. Like I have brothers, I don't understand that type of man tears. I don't, that's what we call it. We call them like man tears. I don't understand that type <laughs> of tears. I got some cat, like I was talking about that clubhouse and on YouTube. I go in there and, it, and they start saying my name, want to talk to me, have a con to where even women be like, yo, dude, why did you follow him everywhere he goes? Like everywhere. I guarantee you they didn't have a father. They need a they need some type of father in their life or man in their life to say, hey, you shouldn't do that. You should be a man and do your own thing. Especially, it's one thing if if like because a lot of stuff gets shared online. But it's one thing if a brother comes to you or a sister for that matter says, Hey man, can you not share my stuff? Like as black man, you should say, you know what, I respect that and I just won't share. And create your own content. If you got to just do your own thing, create your own content, build your own platform. You know, the Bible says don't build on another man's foundation. You like that mm. one? <laughs> I knew it's fake. You see it's crazy? He said, mm. I like when you quote the Bible. I'm telling you, when I see you quote the Bible, I say, I, I like a learned individual. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. I think that's why when, when, I was up in, when I was in New York, when I ended up hanging out with those, those, the, the brothers from from, from, um, Israelite. from the ISUK. Mm -hmm. The reason I was standing on the corner with him, was like, hey, that's Tommy. I said, yeah. So I came up in there with him. And, I, and it was like, because when you when you know the Bible and you talk to somebody else that know the Bible, mm -hmm. it's a kinship there. Right. 
all the other stuff fall down and you know the right. word. Because at least the word is where y'all be. Right. You have a baseline. Okay. If these brothers is following this, at least I know how far it won't go. You know what I mean? Like, even if you have disagreements, which is why even us being able to come in this platform together, we mess so well because we have that. So you don't have to worry about the bullshit. You know what I mean? I, I, you know what I mean? For all the people that said they wanted to come into the live, did anybody click in and come in yet and join? They did. We got right now somebody named Don and Jess Stowe. So I was I was waiting when you ever you're ready. 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 Okay, I want to see what's happening. Let's 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 get to the fun part. <laughs> All right. First off, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna bring in Don. Don, go ahead. You are on the show with myself and the cap. You gotta unmute. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yes, sir. No, how you guys doing today? You're doing good to go. You're pretty good. Yeah, I, um, so I've been listening to you guys um, for, I say, a good hour. I was kind of late listening to the whole thing. Um, but there was like a question I just wanted to ask both of you. So everyone in the world, they pretty much have a mentality of they want to be a giver. They want to actually show that they actually love someone. And my thing when it comes down to black people, I agree with what you're saying, um, Cap. It's just like we don't value each other. We just don't really appreciate each other. And so my question is to both of you, what is the best way to kind of, how can I say, have like, a, I'm trying to say, um, like a, like a, uh, like a, uh, a certain point where you just stop giving if you don't feel like you really appreciate or value. Giving to what exactly? Mm. Talking about relationships? So, talking about to the community? Like, what are you talking about? Like a relationship. Because like like I'm just emphasizing, yeah. So like I was just saying, like if you're in a relationship with someone, and like I was saying, everyone in the world, pretty much like Tommy or even yourself, you guys give to the women that you really tr truly love and care about. But when it comes to black people, as of lately, we just don't appreciate someone actually sacrificing, actually showing that they really appreciate our hard work and dedication to them. So I was just wondering, what is like the best time to just end it with someone who doesn't really appreciate you, really? That could be for men and women. Is this something that, what? yeah, is, is this something like um, you're in a relationship for years? Are you just getting together? Are you saying, because what um, it's, say, you're saying, like, you're in a relationship and only one side is given and the other one is taken. Is that what you're saying? Yes. And no, in most cases, here's what's, here's something that black people would not ever do. They would never say, "Let's go get counsel." Let's go get counsel. What is the root cause of why I'm always giving and why the other one is always taking? Sometimes the giver is giving because they believe that's what keeps a person. Let's say if you're giving money, you're giving money because you believe that keeps. If you're giving gifts, you believe that keeps. But at some point. The giver is going to feel abused if they're not getting nothing in return. So what I would do first, maybe before you get to counsel, is ask the person, is all I'm worth, is I'm, am I only worth giving? Like, do you ever have a conversation about receiving? I'm asking you. Just personally, no, I, I don't. No, 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 I don't. I'm not asking you personally. I'm asking like, is that something that, okay, I, let me rephrase a little bit. So what I would do is in that scenario, I would ask the, if I'm the, if I'm the only one giving, I would have a conversation about that with the individual. There's a concept called cognitive behavior therapy and what's also called reality therapy. Reality therapy is like, Let's say you're in a relationship with somebody and you call them, they don't answer. Let's say you text them and they don't answer. Let's say you call them again, they don't answer. You text them again, you don't answer. Reality therapy is this. In your mind, because they didn't answer the phone, they're either ignoring your calls, they're with somebody else, they're doing it on purpose to start an argument. Those are the three things that pop in your head. The fourth option of them just being asleep, being on silent, does not pop in your head because you're not thinking their side, you're thinking your own thoughts and imparting it on them. And so when you speak to them, you come with them with the aggression of, hey, why you didn't answer the phone? 
Now, they could have just woken up and just saw the phone call and then decide to call you. So when you come with them with that energy, they're lost because they were just sleeping. But in your mind, you don't have a whole full out fucking argument with them because they missed your call and communication four times. That's what reality therapy is. That applies also with you being a giver and them being a taker. If you don't have a conversation, but you just put them as a taker, they could have just been somebody that just accepted you giving gifts and it's not their thing to do. If you never have the conversation, you can't fault them for it. So you have to have, excuse me, you have at least have a conversation about what your expectation is in the relationship to be able to accept their answers. You can't assume. That's a big problem in relationships. We assume things instead of asking and then accepting the answer. So I would start there, brother. I will say this to you. That I will say this to you, brother. And I really like the fact that Cap decided to, to drill down on what you were saying. But there's a song. Like, I was, what, what the hell, Don? Yeah, Don. You just kept getting phone. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don. Don. Damn it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Turn it off. Turn it off. I, tur I turned it off. All right, mute yourself. You, I'm getting right, feedback. Go into your um, settings, and change settings and change it. Go into your settings. Oh, there you go. There you go. Do that. Okay. Even better. Do that. You done unmuted your damn self. Now I got to hear myself again. You just being a dick, Don. Your name ain't Don. It's Dick. Anyway, Don, there's an old parable from the book of Annie Lennox. And it said, sweet dreams are made of this. Who am I to disagree? Travel the world in seven seas. Everybody's looking for something. Some of them want to use you. Some of them want to get used by you. Some of them want to abuse you. Some of them want to be abused. And sir, a lot of times y'all men will walk into situations. This one of the time I get on men because I'm getting on myself. A lot of times you will believe that you give somebody then you expect something, but you didn't work out that contract in the beginning because you didn't have enough confidence to say this for that quid pro quo. As my man um, Austin Powers would say, squid pro row. It, it, this is what happens. You didn't work out a deal because you didn't have enough confidence to actually state your case up front. So what you thought was you could manipulate someone into a relationship. So you thought that you could do certain things and then you got mad when you didn't get anything back. But you didn't say quid pro quo up front because, again, you didn't have enough power or enough security in yourself. And there's an old another parable that says a sucker gets lit. If you present yourself as a sucker, don't be upset that you got licked. So a lot of you men will then turn against the women because you tried to manipulate the woman by being what you were told is supposed to be what she'll like. And when you didn't get what you wanted, then you said those damn women. But if you really were secure, you would only give what you have to people who deserve it. You wouldn't wait. Say something, Don. See, that was a good thing about what I do. That's why I, when people come, to, when I counsel people, <laughs> I always tell somebody, a lot of times I do this, the counsel and then I cancel the C-A-N-C-E-L because what happens is and you probably know it. Mm -hmm. You tell them too much truth. They be like, I didn't pay for that shit. I paid for you to tell me that I was right. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't pay for that shit. <laughs> now they mad at you. And one of the worst times I have is when I'm having couples counseling. Right. Because usually the man is actually, and I don't know if you've seen it that way, but I've talked to other, other uh, psychologists and they talk about how the man is usually more willing in counseling sessions to actually find a solution. The women are coming in to get confirmation. Yeah, no, no, that's fact. Like you gotta, you gotta work real hard to get down to the women. Like even the even the most angriest man, when you give him some logic, is straight. 
Them women coming in there, they already know you on their side because he did this and that, that, that. And you got to wiggle through the whys and the question, the things that they're not saying. Men are mostly up front. Unless it's some super duper 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 same shameful shit, the men are usually up front. Unless it's some super duper shameful shit. Mm -hmm. All right. and, and that's why I enjoy that. And then I have to separate them, right. which really makes them mad. After I interview them together, I tell them the next time I'm going to talk to you guys individually. Kind. I agree. Yeah. And, and, um, and I'm putting y'all on game, but uh, thank you for coming back, Don. Uh, but Justo, you are on there as well. Don, did we help you any? Um, yes, I'm sorry for leaving earlier, guys. Like I said, I messed up because, like, with my connection. So I just wanted to just say a few things to both of you. Like I said, um, what I was trying to say is, like, I wasn't trying to manipulate anyone, really. I don't have any, any like, vile or any ill intentions towards women. It's just that when I notice with, between Black men and Black women, there's, like, something where you see, like, a Black woman dedicate all her time and emphasis to a, a, either to a Black man or vice versa. And they don't really seem like they feel happy. So I understand where you're coming from, Tommy. I understand where you're coming from, Prince, as well. I, I mean, Cap, I'm sorry, but I was just trying to at least have an understanding of like what would be the best way to kind of neutralize that before it gets gets really toxic or to the point where the person is just really hurt. That's why I was just wondering. You got really toxic right there when you done gave the light skinned man so much more credit than me. You done called this man a whole prince. You went from a captain to a prince. What are you gonna be king next time he come in? My ass just a surf. Now he hates you. Now Tommy hates you. Nobody. Now Tommy hates you. I'm tired. I ain't nobody. This nigga got like no, mama on his side. Now random dudes I, calling him prince. Everybody. It's a gift. Hey, I, 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 gave you, I gave you a credit, Tommy. No, nah, but you called me a Tommy. bitch, though. That's what he's saying. He, you called me I'm a bitch. I'm a bitch. I'm a and, listen, and I'm going to highlight it, too. I'm going to say, hey, Tommy, you know, niggas call me Prince on the show. You know, what? When you going to get you? I corrected myself. You ain't have Prince I corrected the bars myself. to Zari. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I corrected myself, so you got to give me some credit for that. Yeah, dog. He gonna be a czar next time he show up in this bitch. Like, what the fuck? We all just giving this man titles? <laughs> it was a mistake, my bad. Yeah. Why I gotta feel like a second fiddle? I thought he told me we would be equal. You said we would be equal. Max, I can't control what the people say though. So like, I can't control. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, 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 he like Julius Caesar. I didn't say I want to be king. I mean, that's what they said. <laughs> God, dog. Uh, hey, Justo, you're on the line with us. Talk to us. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Mm -hmm. Hey, um, peace to both of y'all brothers. Um, Captain Zariac, I recently got um hip to you uh, from some interview I saw you doing with um Tariq Nasheed. Okay. Tommy, I've been a, a fan of yours since back in 2011. You know what I'm saying? When I used to watch all your shit, I'm talking about I put people on your shit. And then I'm going to tell you what turned me off about Tommy, but I ain't going to hold it again. I'm not going to hold it again. Hold up. Hear me, hear me out. No, nah, it ain't got nothing to do about the bras. It ain't got nothing to do about that. My thing was, Tommy, your show used to kick it a lot, but then after a while, you started letting the audience get to you. And every show became, these motherfuckers talk about me. These motherfuckers, and, and it became annoying after a while, bro. And I think that you you kind of strayed away from what you had originally put out there, and that's just me giving constructive criticism. Not no extra. Well, I, 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 I can listen. Remember, Kevin Samuels called into the show and said it before he became Kevin Samuels. He called into my show and said it. Then he was like, "Well, fuck it, since you ain't gonna do it, I'm gonna do it." So he just took what I was doing and put a suit on it and put some sugar in it. Um, sugar in it is but the point crazy. <laughs> Yeah, Jesus turned water, Jesus turned water into wine, he turned water into Kool-Aid. He, he made more loaf of bread, he brought donuts. I'm just saying, he just 
It's just hey, what he did. The comment section said not cane sugar. They said it was cane sugar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, I'm not, I'm not saying anything. But no, I, I, I agree with you. What happened was, but I, I try to explain to people. I was just a regular man. Y'all start following a regular man. I was not this high up person. I was just a dude. It's one of the reasons why your man Moses didn't get into the promised land. He was still a nigga. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm he saw it, got mad. He was still a nigga. I was still a nigga. I didn't see y'all the way y'all saw me. And it yeah. hurt me because I had spent so many years trying to help people. And it seemed like all I was getting now was people trying to fuck up my life. And, and and I don't know if you ever had that happen, but it really hurts. That's what Don was saying about when you really feel like you're giving your all to someone mm -hmm. and they taking you for fucking granted. And it seemed like people were taking me for granted. Then they were eating off of me every fucking day. That was my it question hurt. I had. That was my question I also had about the subject matter. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Sometimes I disagree with, with things you say. I'm pretty on board with Cap usually says, but here's my thing. Um, I'm okay, 30, I get I'm 30, it. I'm, 30, I'm, 30, I'm, 30, I'm getting skin bleach, sir. No, I'm getting no, skin no, bleach. No, no, I'm 36. I, I'm I am bleaching my skin. I read into this. I'm doing it. I'm 30. Look, 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 look. No, no, it's just a difference in the you know ideology. He just wants to go. Just though he just want to know if you dark skin or light skin. That's all. He nah, does. man, nah. Cause look, I'm light skin, bro. But here's the thing, though. Oh, God, hey, man. But look, no, no. they sticking together. Nah, it ain't they that. It ain't that, bro. He knew you before me, though, Tommy. He knew you before me. <laughs> and he said, he, he saw you. I'm a gateway driller. He's on look, crack. Here's that my thing. Look. You know, I got I got two kids by one woman. Uh, met in high school. We was together in high school about time about three years, something like after that. Everything messed up and all of this. You know, I'm saying this. I'm like, I'm on air. They see my logo and everything. They know who I am. Um, my kids became teenagers. They teenagers right now. Like I said, I'm 36. The disrespect, though, uh, Cap. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. The disrespect that we go through with a lot of these women. It's unbearable. I'm talking about I would have to message you to tell you some of the stuff that was told and said on me. And, and, it, and it like that hurt me like as a man, like it made me I'm, like crying like that hurt. Did hey, you say your, your kids are older now? Yes, sir. Uh, my uh, my oldest daughter will be 18 this year and my youngest daughter will be 15 this year. Yeah. Was you on child support or anything like that? Yes, sir. Yeah, see, I, now I'm gonna tell you something. There's another thing for protection. If they would have put me on child support, I wouldn't even seen them kids. I'm sorry. I I can, I, I can never. I, why is me and this nigga on the same page? We like the yin and the yang. You know, it's the real dark skin side and the light skin side. That's us. I just I can't see it that way. I'm gonna tell you why you don't. I'm gonna tell you why you don't see it that way. You don't see it that way because you believe that no matter what, you got to be in your kids' lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But if you want them to see you as a man, you should not have seen them kids because you know what you would have always been? A man. Period. You know what you're, you know you're going to be? Now, I don't know what your relationship like, so I, I'm, I'm going to try to speak generally. But you know what you're going to be and what you're going to teach? You're going to mm. teach your kids that either they can be the abusers or they can get abused. And no matter what, there's going to be an expectation that this person I'm abusing has to still do what I say. Mm. You put me on child support. I'm not seeing them kids. You're telling me the government, you're telling me the government should be their daddy. You want me to be my, to be their father. You're going to respect me as their father. And I'm assuming you're not in a relationship with them no more, right? Ah uh, no, nah, it's been right. So if you're not, if you're not in a relationship with the woman, that's all vengeance. Everything that that woman is doing is vengeance. If you're in the child's life, there's no reason for child support. I mean, I'm I'm hip on all of that. I'm hip on all of that. What I'm gonna say, what I was asking was, is how do you repair 
the relationship with your children after that. After that? When so they- she broke your kids' rela- your relationship with you and the kids? One of them. You said you paid the one job. Of, was paying you you didn't court. pull away. Right. See, go, Cap, you got this because I'm mad. <laughs> one of them. One of them. So, so these are these are children by the same mother or children by different women? Same woman. So how does she keep you, how does she keep you from one and not the other? I told you I was I was eighteen with the first one and twenty two with the second one. No, what I'm saying is, but you're saying she kept you from one of the children? Oh no, she kept me from both of them. I'm talking about as they get older. That I'm building a relationship with them, oh, okay, 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 okay. and one of them is okay. straying away from me from things that she's like buddy buddy with her mother and something. And, you know, it. And my youngest daughter is like with me. You know, that's my. You know, but my you oldest. Know, daughter, okay, no, no problem. That youngest daughter that's with you, that's mm-hmm. that's your daughter. If the older the the older one is twenty two, right? That's what you said. No, I'm uh I'm talking about um. Uh, the age is different. I ain't say I, 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 I said fifteen and eighteen. So, so the fifteen, year. the fifteen year old is with you. The eighteen year old is not, right? Yes, sir. That's what you're saying. The eighteen yes. year old, if she don't understand it, even as a man, now I'm assuming you tried to build a relationship with her, right? I d- I have a relationship with him. It just something just went left, like. With the, well, my oldest daughter, so yeah. I, so, so, do you know what went left? You don't know. I have some idea, but it was about paying for something I thought was unreasonable, and I so guess I, that's so that sound like she wanted you to do something for her. You said no because, as a father, you thought it was unreasonable, and she rejected your reasoning. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, you got to stand on that. I have, I have, I am now. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Listen. <laughs> Parent, that's the problem. Raising your kids require if you bend the knee, as they would say in Game of Thrones, you'll be bending. Mm-hmm. You're not listen. Mm-hmm. The Bible says, "Let the children speak to thee, then to for you to be at their courtesy." I believe that's what the Bible say. You're a mm-hmm. father. You're not a friend. That's not. That's not. Uh. That's not what the Bible. The Bible wouldn't. We're, a lot of times we think as parents we're supposed to bend and do whatever it is that they say. We're not supposed to be. Hey, Tommy, I know you're probably going to want that scripture. That's Ecclesiasticus 33 and 21. It says, for better it is that thy children should seek to thee than that thou shouldest stand to their courtesy. And what that means is, as a disciplinarian, if you deem something is not good for your child, you are supposed to say no. Mm-hmm. And if she doesn't like she's 33, what 21 Ecclesiastes, 30, 33, 21? Yep, 33, 21. That's what the okay. Ecclesiastes, 33, 21. yeah, and I, and I and I feel you on that. That's what I have been standing on. Like, and I think that you know what I'm saying. A lot of the times I got bullied into doing certain things, you know what I'm saying, for my children. Yeah, or, you stop that. And let yeah. me tell you something. Out of guilt, though, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. at, at one point in time, when I, when they was kept away from me, you know, I feel like I missed out on it. So that's why I don't know. You feel? Listen, and don't let that guilt bother you because you didn't take yourself out of your kid's life. That woman did. Yeah, that's an unnecessary guilt that you put in, and that daughter is gonna respect that you didn't break your morals. Either she's going to respect that you didn't break your morals or she's going to come correct. But you can't bend your position as a father. And it's so sad that, fa- listen, if y'all, if you women would get out the way, these children wouldn't be as horrible. And the flip side, if you're going to remove the father, then take the blame for what the children are doing as well. And you could tell, I can you, brother. You said what? When you get a chance, read, when you finish, read it again so that nah, I can this, see it. It's up on the screen for you. Nah, Ecclesiasticus 33 and 21. For it is better, for better it is that thy children should seek to thee, and that thou shouldest stand to their courtesy. You don't stand for them. Your job is to raise them kids. And she'll respect it. And this is what I wanted to say. A lot of women don't realize the damage and hurt that you cause 
you your emotional ass just think that you getting vengeance on him for whatever caused y'all to break up not realizing you're damaging the relationship between the father and the children and that's a bond of innocency that they cannot get back and then you start feeding in information to the damn children that they eventually use against the father but i guarantee you this brother you stand on that principle she's going to respect that you won't bend because it's not that you don't love her she knows that you love her she has to get she just has to get over the fact that her emotion don't dictate what you do and then she'll respect it more you're teaching her discipline by standing on that out and don't let that mama don't let that mama stand in the way either you got to stand against the mama too and she gonna she probably gonna text you you ain't shit tell you you ain't shit but mm -hmm. you are absolute <laughs> by standing on your principles and morals yeah, yeah, I am, man. I already know you want to bounce some shit off of y'all, man. Yeah, no sweat. Uh, appreciate it, man. Hey, no appreciate sweat. It. <laughs> Anytime, Justo. I appreciate you coming up because I'm going to tell you something. And you're right. It's this idea of um, I have two children. I remember I told the one, the, the oldest, my daughter's mom and I, we fine. The youngest one, I told everybody about the situation and how it came about. And I specifically said, as long as I'm on child support, you're going to get that exact check. Mm -hmm. Don't hit me up and ask, tell me she need X, Y, Z. Nope. The government's going to give you that exact check. Yeah. Word is bond. The other one, she gets what she wants anytime she wants, because there ain't no white man out there telling me what I got to give you once a month or I'm going to go to jail. Right. Because here's what I tell people all the time. Once you put, I can't make this payment. I can go to jail. Imagine if you had a car and if you couldn't make the payment once a month, you could go to jail. Would you love that car or would you yeah. view that car as an albatross around your neck? I, I try to get rid of the car. I would wait. I couldn't wait until I could get rid of that damn car. Thank you. And most men can't wait till your child turn 18 because it's been an albatross around their neck. Mm -hmm. You know what else, Tommy? They are afraid that they yeah. go to college. Because if the kid goes to college, you, now, 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 now you hoping they don't get a good education. You added years on my payment. But, and you hoping they don't get a good education. Because their good education mean I got to pay more goddamn child support. That's a rough deal. I, and child support does not raise a kid. It just maintains them. It just means mm -hmm. pay your bill. That does not raise a kid. How does 400, whatever you paying... How does that teach that kid to come in the house on time? Take the trash out, clean his room, discipline, get aid, get all this education. You sick the white man on me, man. I'm gone. So I'm sorry. I'll talk to them kids when they old enough to understand. Facts. We gonna sit there. I tell y'all, me, me, me and Cap gonna sit around <laughs> drinking beers and taking shots, all kind of shit. Y'all gonna be, they gonna be mad. Cause we're like, these niggas get along because right. the difference <laughs> is Right. The thing about it, what right is right, wrong is wrong. When you saying shit, even when it's against me, I think you did it earlier. I was like, man, you got a fucking point. Your time, your hand. The boy saw it early, and I was like, ah, this nigga got a point. <laughs> I don't want to get it. <laughs> but isn't that something we typically? Let me tell you something, and you can tell them if I'm right or not. Typically, what we do as men. The conversation we have secretly, we're able to tell our homeboy, like we'll be like, man, this fucking this bitch treating me. You know, we'll be like, right. nigga, she treating you like that because you be cheating all the motherfucking time. You know, step out on the bit. Like we will tell our <laughs> homeboy that in private. Better. We're able to go at him and tell him how he fucking up. We don't just sit up there and say, you can fuck up, and we're just gonna back up your fuck up. Women will back up the fuck up of other women. Right. Women will sit up there and see that a woman is being vengeful, Good. keeping her child from that father, and still will back up that stupid shit of her mm -hmm. doing it. That's Men right. Men will say, nah, nah, man, you wrong. You wrong. We'll pull you to the side. Now, we ain't going to try to embarrass you, but we'll pull you to the side and say, no, no, you wrong, bro. That's right. That's a good woman. You fucking up. Mm -hmm. We got Truth Seeker here. What's up, Truth Seeker? Hey, Shalom, Shalom. Hey, Shalom, brother. All praise to the Most High for, uh, you know, having you brothers come together, have this powerful conversation. Uh, I came in kind of late, but um, 
I heard some points and um y'all were speaking on one just not too long ago on the uh the child support and you I caught that part earlier and um Tommy made the point about um how women will just lie down when niggas, just lie down when niggas. right and when you look at the history of how the white man has the, the the devil has integrated within our women's minds going back to eve you know they got this uh, mentality now where you can have babies by different men get different child support checks by different men and fund a lifestyle off that so you know is it goes to the bible and you, you've been speaking on the bible and it seems like tom is pretty receptive that's why i'm saying i'm thankful for this powerful conversation i think tommy is going to be an israelite <laughs> <laughs> I think he's gonna be a future Israelite because it really just connects to that. They're they're so ingrained in our in our people's minds, not only the women, a lot of the men's minds, but um we just gotta get out of their uh their way of thinking and instead of combating with one another, it's about acknowledging the obvious uh elephant in the room and targeting that as our true enemy because us warring at one another, that's just gonna whittle down our nation more and we've already been a destroyed people, historically. You know? I, I appreciate that. Let me ask you this. Can we really talk about, cause I think, I appreciate the fact that Cap ain't scared to step on the uh, third rail. Because when I typically talk about people about that third rail, it goes, they goes left. Cause I remember Tyreek Nasheed, after Candace Owens got fired, he put up a post and said, she got fired by the same white supremacy she worked for, the suspected white supremacist. And I said, how can I responded to him? And I said, how can you say that when what she said was about Jews and it was a Jew that fired her? Right. Why will you not tell them this? Why will you not say that word? Why will you constantly say white supremacy and you get away with it? You never get flagged. You never get kicked off. But you won't bring up a certain sect of blacks. And let me tell you why he should bring up a certain sect of blacks, because he's the one who came up with FBA. And what is FBA? A delineation between blacks, is it not? Mm -hmm. Right. That's so he can delineate blacks, but he won't delineate them whites. Because if you get online every day and you say, fuck the white man, the white man's the devil, you will never get flagged. Right. Say that about the Jews. Mm. Oh, right. No, no. I, I definitely will say about the Jewish man. <laughs> I mean, I don't have. But a that's what platform. I'm telling you. If you I don't look have a big at who, platform. You look at who. If you look at who's being really manipulated, and then when you boil it down to who Tyreek Nasheed is married to, a half black, half Jewish woman. Mm. Well, I, I don't. I don't support. I don't really uh, follow Tariq Nasheed too much. I'm not too familiar with the uh, the term you were referring to. I, I, maybe it was the Ish people, is what you were meaning earlier. That yeah, somebody in the about. comment section said, Tommy always takes a jab at Tyreek because of the crispy puppet. <laughs> you same black people who sit up there and think, it, and I will listen to you. Now, listen to that. Y'all will think that's funny that a black, y'all will all be Israelites and love the blacks, but y'all can't help but laugh at the fact that somebody make a fun of, of somebody being dark skinned. It'd be hilarious to y'all. I ain't laugh. Then how can you claim? No, I know you didn't, but I'm asking, how is that? How do you build something like that? Right. What can you build? When you're, I had a, a conversation with a dark skin lady today, and she talked about how hard it was growing up just being fucked with called dark skin. Mm. It's a girl. Nah, that's messed up, man. That's messed up. But people it are is messed thing up. That, that, that goes back to the point, though. That goes mm -hmm. back to the point, though. But, but, here, but if you look at it, that's why I was saying we don't call out the real issues. We call out shit that's ancillary. That no, that is a real but issue. Not, and, and and you brought out a good one in, earlier about how you said you got violated when you were younger, and you you opened up, and I appreciate you opening up and and you know expressing that because I agree that's totally wrong. I got friends that talked about that same issue, and every time it came up, I wasn't like, "Yo, that's awesome." I was like, "Yo, that's fucked up." You were a little kid, you know. Like that, that messes with you. And I don't see forever. myself as like a victim. I don't tell people, I don't see myself as a victim because if I, here's a problem. If you internalize a lot of that shit, you will then start doing it to other people. Exactly. And that's what we got to start teaching our people. There's nothing wrong with getting psychological help. 
Right. If you right. broke your arm, you go to the doctor for that. Exactly. Why is it we as black people have told people, shut up and deal with it? Right. This is why we got so many savages in the community who are willing savages. We are creating these demons. Right. Because we won't even let them do anything like simply express right. the pain. Because most people going through stuff, you know what they really want to do? Mm -hmm. Stop other people from going through it. I know older brothers who took ass whoopings for their little brothers. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, I was one of them. See? Hey, but when you brought up, you said shut up and deal with it. You're referring to like us as a group of people right now, right? Right. Well, I was referring to the fact that I, I'm I'm big on children thing. That's why I did the movie A Fatherless America. I'm big on children. Mm -hmm. Children are the biggest group of people. Like I heard people say the most unprotected group of people in the United States is black women. Bullshit. It's black children. Right. Right. Black women get all kind of shit. They get all kind of people looking out for them. Yeah. Nobody's looking out for black children. When you can drop a motherfucking child off at a uh, hospital, police station, just because you don't want it. Black and children, black men too, I would say. Thank you. Thank you. Because uh, Kat was talking about that earlier, about the shit that as black men, we get to go through and we right. still got to put on the... Uh, right. And fight through it. They tell us we got to fight through it. Exactly. Get over it. <clears throat> and, mm -hmm. you know... There you, there you go. Right back yeah, to the point. that's exactly my point. It. That's just black men. Mm -hmm. We're the ones that have been taking the brunt of that, uh, that force, but it's been black men and black women from other nations and we've been hearing get over it forever you know and that's not to say the same thing not to say we're victims because of that but we need to acknowledge that because just not acknowledging it and not acknowledging how we need to band together and look out for each other because no one else on this planet has and will you know the longer we ignore that you know it's just kind of holding us back i feel like and I feel like that's why I'm saying I think you you might become an Israelite because if I feel like you you starting to see that, like, well, no, I started no to see it when he told me I can have more than one wife. I was like, okay, <laughs> he, had, he, had me right there. he had me a hello right there. I said, wait, what? <laughs> you still? Man, this boy crazy, man. This <laughs> You gonna have to. You gonna have to explain me everywhere you take me, Cap. Everywhere you take me, you gonna have to say it beforehand. You gonna have to tell these people. Look, he gonna say some stupid because, shit. Yep. Just let it. Yeah. Go. And you, you gonna hey, be you would be one of the ones good. that that would be like viable to have multiple too. Because, I, like personally, I I I, I, don't, I see it as lawful, but I don't think every man should have multiple wives. I don't think every man should have <laughs> one wife. I don't think every man should have one wife. There's you know certain men that need to focus on other things not lay with women, you know, get other things in order, get their house in order before they take on one wife, let alone multiple. But I said you would probably you would be one of the ones that would be able to handle multiple wives. You're like you're in a position at the time. True, but you know what you just said was biblical as well? Jesus spoke about that. Okay. That some of y'all don't need no wife at all. Oh, right, right, right. Oh, right, right, right. That your job that, that you should concentrate on the idea of 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 being a servant of the Lord. And that's that's your role. Right. All praise. Right. All praise. Sure did. That's right. That's right. Other than that, it, it, listen. Oh, go ahead. Go, go. No, I was no, just saying the, the the thing is, a lot of wise people will tell you, you might not want that smoke, or you right. might not be able to have that smoke. Not every man is built to be able to be a husband a provider because here's what it is when you're a husband and cap you can tell that more than me when you're a husband and a father i remember a girl told me she said i want a good man in my life because when i hear some noise downstairs or a window break a good man is gonna go look for it a bad man gonna say girl what's that <laughs> <laughs> and it's true like we run out and take bullets mm -hmm. for that which we love. The little girl I have, I have woken up, Cap, I don't know if it's ever happened to you. I've woken up in a sweat crying because I had a dream that something happened to my little girl. And I went in the room to make sure she was straight. Right. 
And her mama so said, that's said how you daughter, need to love that girl more than you love yourself. The scriptures say the father, father waketh for the daughter when no man knoweth, and the care for her loses. Ooh. Yeah. Because, you know, she's your, I mean, you're her first protected. What, what you teach her, and this is what makes fathers uh, so important, especially girls, like you're her first love. If she don't have you in her life. She don't know how to fall in love. And then she go fall in love with the nigga in the hood somewhere, breaking her back. Then go get another one, breaking her back. Then when she gets 35, then had every nigga break her back. Now she want to find a good man. So you're the only man that will ever love your daughter and expect nothing from her in return. Right. Facts. Hmm. So. You had anything else, Truth Seeker? Um, no, nah, that's really it. Again, thanks for having me on. Uh, all praises to the Most High. Most High in Christ. Yes, sir. Most High in Christ. You got some very respectful young man who listened to you, to Cap. I'm not going to even lie about that. Thank you. We well, yeah, like, here. Huh? Yeah, no, I'm listening to y'all. Like, ooh. they y'all come up here saying, "Sir, y'all are well spoken. Y'all are stern in what the fuck y'all are saying." <laughs> yeah, I, we're I, supposed I, to. We're credit, supposed y'all. to come If y'all want anything, y'all are teaching these men to be men. That's right. That's it, it's right. supposed to be like we're supposed to be so in order that it's an amazement to the other nations that we could go through what we have and come out of it more polished than any of the other nations. That's that's the, when the kingdom <laughs> will be on earth when the other nations look and they say. That, that's the light in the Bible, right? That's why we're the we're the chosen ones. Yeah. Because because really, when I was a kid, and I probably would need the wrath of the Lord to actually enact it. Like, I just thought like, even though they put us through that, I didn't want to put anyone through that same situation. Like, like innately, mm. it just it just feels wrong. But the more I learn and the more I research, it feels less and less wrong too. Because it, it it took some uh some beating into my my mental to actually flip over and say you know this is what the scriptures say and it just is what it is. Yeah, I mean, look at it. Who who you who you, who you follow? One of the men you follow. Jesus took on pain, stripes, and whips that was not meant for him. And you said you did it as a big brother. Right. Unwillingly. That is it. Yeah, you may not know your connection with the Most High. You got a connection, and you may not see it. That's why I love when the Bible says, "Train them up." They'll come back because they've been trained right. And I can listen to y'all. It was something that was in y'all, and you didn't even know it, and somebody brought it out of you. It's like the mutant X gene with Deadpool. Somebody, <laughs> <laughs> Somebody brought it out. It's the sleeper cells. They wake it up, out. man. It right. came out in the form of a superpower. Think about it. It came out in the form of a superpower. And it seems like you brothers are embracing it. So yeah. I'm telling y'all, y'all are, y'all are winning me the hell over. That's what's up. All praise to the most high in Christ. All right. Give him a hand. Amen. Amen. Okay. You got another brother up here that want to come up here and talk to you. You got a couple of them. Uh, apocalyptic minister. Go ahead, bro. All right. I don't know. Can y'all hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, we can hear. Hey, what's going on, fellas? What's going on? It's good to be here. Uh, first off, I want to say thanks to, to Zariot. I've been listening to him for a few years now and that's a, that's a good brother. Uh, Tommy, I've been listening to you for, for about five to six years. And uh, my favorite thing from you is when you put the, uh, the, uh, the Terminator, the Terminator 1000, when you put him up there on the, <laughs> on the screen <laughs> and let us know what the women to do, you know, the BT 1000. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there you go, there you go, there you go. <laughs> what, what, my, what, what my man Reese say? If you know, what did my man Reese say? He said, "Uh, 
He said they don't. He said I, I forgot, man. But I, I watched that movie every once in a while. But I know they he said they don't. They they, they, they be, be, wait, here it is. They can't be bargained yeah, with. Yeah. They can't be reasoned yep. with. They don't feel pity yep. or remorse or fear. Come on, Tom. And they absolutely will not stop ever <laughs> until, until you are you dead. Are dead. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> Woo! Ah, uh, you know that's so. Tazariak, this is this is this is one thing I do. I, I agree with Tommy on a lot of what he has to say. Right. But Tommy, you got body, you got body bagged the other night, man. And I ain't riding. I ain't oh, riding Tazariak. He body bagged you. Look, look, look at Tom. He, he did. You got body the other night, but I just got one question before you go: Are you light skin or dark skin? Yeah, I'm dark skin. Yeah, there you go, Tommy. He's dark. He is I'm dark skin. I'm dark skin, he's Tommy. Selling. I'm with you, brother. No, oh. he's <laughs> no. Woo. You just stuck in. You don't. You just said the beige rage one in the cage. I don't like it. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm with you, Tommy. I'm with you, man. Why did you decide to betray your dark skin brother for him? Why oh, did but, you do hey, it? Hey, I, I apologize, brother. Hey, <laughs> y'all have a good night, man. <laughs> hey, yeah, hey, thanks, hey, thanks for all the good word, man. Both of y'all, keep it up. Hey, thank you, brother. I appreciate it. I tell you what, uh, we well, we'll get ready to wrap this. Right. Thing up, we both got uh got got houses we got to take care of, but I think we've given the people enough to be able to go and eat. I think we've actually fed them very well. I you can hear so. how these brothers sound, right? Pretty excited to, to listen to us and and to to speak. And we'll do a show where we allow y'all to speak more longer, right? Because right. tonight, we, yeah, I think tonight. Um, let me ask you something. Um, would you like to speak to before we leave social ISUPK? So I don't. Oh, yeah, that's fine. You can bring them on. I don't, that, I, that should be okay, in my school. Yes, yeah, it's, one, it's one of your people. So I'm going to bring them in. Social, what's up? Oh. Hey, what's good, man? I, 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 I forgot to change my name. <laughs> Let me turn it. I think I hear something in the background. Hold on one second. Yeah, yeah if you do, just go into name. your uh, settings and then click on where it says like. Um, if you click on where it says settings, go click on audio, and then it'll say echo cancellation and reduce mic background noise. Click on that little wheel that says settings, and then click on the first two where it says reduce the uh, background noise and mic, whatever. The first two. Okay. And then, then you won't hear any feedback. All right. Let me see. Yeah, I don't get branded up over there. I like that. All your brothers come in yeah. like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, we professionals, man. We professionals out here. <laughs> hey, hey, Tommy, I can show my you niggas still things, looking man. for jobs. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, my niggas' hey, mamas be telling them it's time to get out that damn internet. Get out that pewter, boy. <laughs> Shalom, shalom, Lord of Christ, Cap. Yeah, shalom, you have some shepherd. That was going on. Right. Uh man, I'm just, I just wanted to come in. Hey, how you doing, Tommy? I just wanted to come in and uh, doing well, basically man. say I seen the uh, the debate the other day, and I, I think y'all got something going there, man. Like that was a nice little discourse, and like you know, towards the end, because we didn't know what to expect. Because I seen some of Tommy's stuff, and then with Captain Tazariak, I was like, oh, this is gonna be fire. We didn't know if it was gonna be fireworks <laughs> or whatever, but. Y'all show that, you know, black men from, you know, different perspectives can come, come together, have a good dis discussion and people can learn from it and take something from it. Right. Um, also, you said something not too long ago, Tommy, you was talking about your daughter. Like, that's happened to me, too. That's happened to where I actually had a bad dream and you get up and you go check on your babies. Mm -hmm. you, you're not playing about your daughters. You right. know what I mean? And so right. I could totally agree with that. Definitely agree with that. And uh, when it comes to, um, I, I came in late, so I don't know exactly what y'all was discussing as far as can a black man uh, protect his household. But I was thinking about the relationship. Well, that's why it's good. Like you didn't, you didn't catch us, so you mm -hmm. get to bring a fresh perspective to it. Right, definitely. Well, I was going to just say what I first heard. What I heard was, or what I thought about is like 
how can you protect something that won't listen to you? Mm. So, Ooh. like with your children, with, with guitar, your with children guitar. you talk to your children, right? <laughs> <laughs> He that came uh, in just he just he just fought it and walked out. <laughs> is is you it's said like, you can't protect what? Say that again because I don't think they heard you. Say it again. You can't protect something that won't listen to you. So a good example is your children, right? You you tell your children, don't go over there, don't do this, don't do that. And they hard hit it, but go and do it, and then they get a they get a scratch, they hurt themselves, and so they go outside of the perimeter of what you tell them to do. So, in the same way with a black woman and a, and a black man, in order to protect your woman, she has to be willing to listen to you. She has to be willing to follow your leadership. Right, right. That's that's what I wanted to bring to it. I didn't I didn't know if it had already been said or anything, but I see that I see that. In that conversation with black men and black women, what you need to do, what he needs to do. The thing about it is that we have two different roles. We play two different sides of the spectrum. And I can't protect you if you're not willing to listen to me. Right. And also going back to my original uh, point that I made about, uh, you know, getting up and going to check on my daughter. That's what you do. That's what a man will do in any situation. He's going to be the first one to hop up, hop up. Go check. Where was that? What was that noise? What's going on? And go look. And that's how you protect uh, protect the perimeter. You understand? So, really, I just want to shout out you brothers and say I like what y'all doing. Once again, I think y'all on to something. And uh, thank y'all for letting me come on. Hey, the why I need that, I need that hat and the bucket hat though. That black authentic. Oh yeah, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, it's looking fresh in the mug up there. Yeah. Y'all making me realize that I'm. Here. I need a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all making me realize my grooming skills is not up to par. And I'm not really feeling that. But but listen, yeah. what you said when you say I'm not I'm not sure y'all said this before. Mm -hmm. The thing about instruction, instruction needs to be repeated, mm -hmm. and right. instruction needs to be second nature to the mm -hmm. fact of where a person is thinking of themselves. So when you know you're saying something right, don't have any fear or problem of repeating it. And definitely because the reason why there's so many, um, let's say, prophets, many of the prophets were saying the same thing, but they spoke to a different group of people. We don't realize that sometimes the way we say it, like a coach in football, a player's coach is different than a guy who's like he's he, he's strict. Mm -hmm. But each right. of them win championships because if they have the right players on their team. And I tell people all the time. One of the things that black folks need to stop doing, and us as black men, that's why this panel right here is nice. We all are leaders. Right. It's right. not one fucking leader. That's when you true. got one leader, it's like the front bowling pin. If you hit it just right, what happens to the rest of them? They all fall down. They all fall down. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's how they stop a lot of black movements in America because we have a fucking leader and then they take the leader out and everybody's mm -hmm. in disarray. Mm -hmm. It happened in Chicago with Cabrini Green. When they took mm -hmm. it down, what happened? Niggas scattered and didn't have no mind. They didn't have no set and look at the war that followed. Right. We need to have it to where if you knock one of us down, everybody else got the program mm -hmm. and we know what to do. Right. Well, if I could say this, I'm in the ISUBK, and that's how that's how we're raised up. And uh, I'll give you a scenario: if we're all out in in in, in uh, public, and let's just say some some this is going back to that whack 100 thing, Cap Salaki. But let's just say somebody a sniper is on the corner, and he he takes the brother that's speaking down. What well, another brother is going to pick up that mic and keep on reading and keep right. on prophesying, right? You know I mean, so we've been trained that way that we're going to keep, you know, we, we know we all leaders and we all have different strengths. You know, I, I is like Captain Tazariak is, is a superstar in our school. You know what I mean? But this, but I can't do what Captain Tazariak does. And I'm sure there's probably some things that I do that he can't do, but we all have our strengths and our weaknesses. And let me just big up Captain Zaria because he can go any damn where, man. Right. Yes, I appreciate he, can go, he can go into any place. And he can deliver the truth, balanced and perfect and succinct. So I just want to big, uh, big up Captain Tazariak on that. I appreciate it, brother. 
Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I appreciate y'all doing something because we got to take this out of black lexicon as well. Sucking dick. <laughs> if a man praises another oh. man, how the hell is that sucking dick? We got to cut that shit out because what we've done, and I don't understand how y'all don't see it, what that's done is stop brotherhood. Right. Every time that's you do what you right. did or to do, that's true. think about it. They make it. You can't big up enough. This man said, wait. And I know Cap was like, I'm not down with that. Wait a minute. What are you talking about? No, I, I knew yeah. where he was going. Wait, wait. I knew where he was going. I'm like, God damn. He said it wrong. Like, God. It was the intro. It was the intro. Yes. Now, hold on. I'm not down with that at all. <laughs> <laughs> I brought this thing around my family. He done said this. <laughs> but I'm dead serious. Like, we got to stop. Oh, you right, though. Not being able to... Yeah. No, nah, you're you 100 crazy. Right. Like, and I, and I, that's what makes uh, what you and I are coming together so epic. And I think what everybody is seeing, what, because they wanted the, the bullshit. But they're getting something far greater, because right? The bullshit wouldn't serve anybody. It would be the typical thing. But now you're getting two people. Like as me and Tommy is talking, Tommy is saying he's saying what I'm saying. When when I respond, like there ain't really much that we disagreed upon in the, mm-hmm. in this back and forth. But we're coming from two different spec spectrums, two audiences coming together, and we're all sitting. And then we bring people in like this going to do we we going to do a lot of this. Like y'all should look forward yes. to seeing us being able to do a lot of this. This would be like the first real to me, like a black CNN type of show where you can get it raw, uncut truths from both sides of the spectrum. Damn, they like the, what y'all see, like on hip hop, like with the drink camps or um, breakfast club. Uh, what's that? What's, what's the Gilly the Kids in them show? Uh, million dollar worth, uh, yeah. Like million dollars worth of game. All that stuff that you see, that's what you're gonna see from Tommy and Captain Chazar, y'all. That's what y'all gonna see. I'm just letting y'all know. Hey, somebody said uh something, and I and I really like it. Uh, the young man up here said, um, what did he say? He said the the duo that uh, oh the tag team you didn't think you need, right? You need right, right. Exactly. Right. exactly, exactly, exactly. And, and 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 it's like you're getting a lot of. And I'm reading from your comment section. A lot of brothers are saying a lot of positive stuff about right. this one. And I think right. because the more we do it, and the more we include, because I think what y'all don't get about me and Cap is, oh, we don't want to just be the people who are just the arbiters of what's right. right. We wanted like like earlier we could have brought y'all in. We want to hear mm-hmm. what y'all got. Because you cannot have a community if you will not listen to those willing to commune with facts. you. That's right. Facts. That's facts. And and and, and I appreciate it. And I can tell y'all, like, I, I was worried before this one. And, and Cap, like, Pep talked me. He was like, no, no, no. This ain't not what you think, man. I, I went and looked through it. And he was like, but here's the one where they said you were nice. They all say you were shit. Look, this one guy said. <laughs> I, he was trying to himself just yet. I had to encourage that. Hey, we didn't say you was bad. Just look, look at this right here. You, look, you, you said something real good. Typed up the whole paragraph and everything, man. You straight. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and, and listen, and we need that. Like, we need people to talk shit and people to be supportive. We're we going to thrive yep. off of it all. Anyway, because you know what they all doing? Sitting here listening. They all sitting here listening. What is Tommy going to say? Right. To what is Cap going to say? Did you hear what Cap said? What's Tommy's right. response to that? You hear what Tommy said? What is Cap's response to that? Damn, they agree right there? What's happening? Like, what's what's the merger? Yeah, that's happening, and then yeah. it, and the the competition or the the nonsense is probably gonna come from whoever we bring on the stage, and mm-hmm. I'm fine with that too. And we'll bring you in, but even if you look at what happened there, the people that came up on here ask questions that now we get to educating from both sides of the spectrum. You got the people coming in here saying, "Man, Tommy, I've been following you since '09." Cap, you yeah. too. Now I get to ask both of y'all questions, man. The camaraderie for us now. Me and Tommy have not spoke until a week before we did the show. 
So Tommy's yeah. experience, my experience, did not bring us together until like I think like last Monday or something like that. We set up a time to do this show, and the first time we got together was live, and you saw how that worked. And then we spoke again before we did this live, and you see how that worked. And the camaraderie is excellent. So I hope y'all yeah, just so y'all know. Right. Yeah, and just so they know, and I hope you don't mind me saying this, we haven't set up anything. Like it's not scripted. Right. I have no idea what the fuck he's gonna say. <laughs> it may be you walk in here on that day, and we completely yep. just fuck you, nigga. <laughs> That's but it, it will never be fuck you, nigga. Right. Yeah, but because it, it will be just be on the opposite side, but it will never be that. And I'm watching the way that the people are are, are saying. There's a young man apparently in your group. He said, uh, and this was pretty cool. He said. Um, Listening to Tommy brought me to ISUPK, mm. no more happy wife. Now he listened to me, but then gravitated to right. y'all. If that right. ain't God, I don't know what it is. Yeah, right. That's dope. Mm. It's definitely two worlds colliding. It's, it's definitely two worlds. Y'all, y'all got two different worlds, and y'all bring two different followings. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so mm -hmm. I think it's cool. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, does uh, Cap. Make sure you let them know. Uh, and, and thank you, social, for coming up here. You said you didn't change your name. Like what was truth. it supposed to be? Give them your name, huh? Like hey, listen, listen. Make sure that you can find me. I'm the Walga Bar. Thank you. I'm in the ISBK, but I also have a platform called Black Authentic Truth. You can find me on YouTube. You can find me on Instagram. And do a little bit of Facebook. So, Black Authentic Truth. Hey, my, my bucket hat size is a 2XL. Black Authentic Truth. 2XL? Yeah. I got you, Cap. Appreciate it. I got you. It. All right, let's mm -hmm. go. I'm a seven and a half. Seven and a half. Yeah, yeah. Tommy, yeah, I'm, gonna need, I'm gonna need to fit it. Here, I'm gonna need to fit it. <laughs> yeah, you want to fit it like you like you wearing. Though. Oh, you want to fit it? Yeah. Oh, you want to? Yeah. You wanna, yeah. I'm, I'm, seven Tommy, and half. Con, I'm gonna have Tommy give me his address. I'm gonna send it to you because I got a belt coming too. I got a belt coming. Yeah, okay. I got I got a belt coming. Oh, Y'all, he's gonna have if he don't wear it. I'm gonna come okay. looking for that belt. I'm you now. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't put it, you don't, no. when you say something good, I'm just gonna need you to throw it over your shoulder. Uh huh. And don't say nothing. Just throw it over your shoulder and wait on somebody to challenge you. Okay, no sweat. I got you. As soon as I get it, I'm gonna rock it. All right. I I'm gonna give you the clean one too. The, the, the place where the name plate is gonna be is gonna be empty. I'm gonna need you to take it to an engraver and get it engraved. I got you covered. Don't even trip. I got you. And I, these and these ain't no punk ass belts. These are the real ones because I was um uh sponsored by the WWE, so it's okay. heavy. It's a real belt. I'm strong. Yeah, I'm strong. <laughs> that's all I'll let you know then you go get a lot of you go get a lot of compliments you're gonna get a lot of people people walk in my house you used to wrestle i'd be like yes <laughs> <laughs> yes i was in the ufc what it was well, when you see the belt jesus <laughs> i like thank you brother for coming up here uh tazaria you got the floor i appreciate Tell them where they can find you let them know thank you i appreciate it of course i'm captain tazaria kavai she could be or i should be kind to command of jenny hunter you can find me um, on my, my podcast, on my YouTube channel, Captain Desiriak, uh Podcast. I also have a Cross the Line radio show that I do every Thursdays, 10 to 12, where we take uh, callers for two hours, whatever questions you may have. My leader, Commander Jenny Hanna, does a show called uh, Black Watch or America on Fire. That's on Mondays. You can find that Mondays from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Um, that's also on YouTube. I also have my business. I bought, I bought my new product here. These are my whip body scrubs. These are um, eight ounce jars. Actually, weighs more than eight ounce. Weighs more like twelve. Yeah, this is fire, Tommy. Um, I also sell body scrubs. You can also get my body oils and body butters if you go to Carl Gas. That's C A R L B A S S dot com. That's CarlGas dot com. It'll take you to my website. Whether it be on Amazon, this is what my oils look like. Thank you to the brother. I sell it. And the, the beautiful thing about my oils is I make them all myself. So these are oils that I make myself. You can't get them nowhere else. I have over 3,500 reviews on my website, what you call a five-star king. Currently, I have a 25% off sale. Uh, we have a pass over April 20th in Durham, North Carolina. That's when I'm going to bring Tommy. He's going to be the safest nigga on the planet Earth on that day. <laughs> Looking forward to meeting that brother. The wife could come too if she wants listen, if she wanted to see it to be believing, she can come as well if you we wanted to. It's definitely a family oriented. Uh my family will be there, my kids will be there. So it'll be a beautiful event. This has been a fire sit down between myself and Tommy. We appreciated the audience participation, even the comments, whether you commented, 
on whether you came in verb uh, visually. We appreciate the time. Um, that's all I got. Thank you. And the numbers were extraordinary yet again. Yep. We appreciate you guys. Uh, over 3,000 people watching us live. And actually, it's uh, uh, 4,000 mm. watching us live live today considering your numbers so we're right. four thousand live listeners and viewers and i appreciate every one of y'all if y'all haven't done it if you have amazon prime do me a favor go and watch my movie a fatherless america you have a lot of people talking about what a fatherless america is about but they've never actually seen it if you've watched people and you watch on amazon it's given it a 4.8 out of 5 and on imdb it's over nine now i think out of 10. Mm. it's an impressive movie and i can tell you this you will cry. Look up my name on Amazon. You can download it right now, stream it, uh, or you can go to my website at aamerica.com. It's a fatherless America. Go get it, watch it, have a good time. I'd like to say peace and love to my man Cap and peace and love to your audience. I really appreciate you spending time with me because I know you could have been doing any and everything else. So I appreciate it. Thank you, brother. Right. No problem. Take it easy, brother. Shalom. We out. We out situation your lifelong instincts will tell you to do all right y'all appreciate it man i think that was another good um fire uh dialogue between myself and tommy if you are not aware we will be doing this i want to say it's probably going to be a weekly segment so um we'll get together we'll come up with uh topics as we come up with the topics they'll get more involved Maybe we'll have a uh, crowd participation a little earlier. Um, I like the brother. I like the energy he brings and vice versa. So until next time, um, I'll see y'all. Make sure y'all tune in to General Hyman's class tomorrow. Go to One West uh, ISBK online classes. That's from 7 to 9 at the Commander General Hyman's class after that. Shalom.